Oh, dang. Oh, that's cool. Okay. Um, what did you want to talk about, Scott? We were going to have a, uh, an interview, but I don't think it's going to work. Oh, yeah. Just, um, you were talking that, you know, you want to go back, get on social media again. Just wondering if you wanted to talk about that at all. How you, um, you, know, you need some help or have a plan or whatever. You know? No, I don't really want to go back on social media whatsoever. <laughs> Would it do you any good? Um, uh, not really. Don't need I don't it. See any value to it. All right. And if you don't need it, then that's fine. Okay. <laughs> yeah, I'm not feeling it. I'm just, I'm cool without it. What's up, Jay? Thanks for coming. Thanks for coming, James. Hello, you too, Scott. Well, hey, hey, we we're going to do an interview. What's up, Jay? Oh, uh, hi. Hey, Jay, we might, um, here, we had some unfortunate events, and I really want to apologize to you, Jay, but. We had some audio issues, and um, well, let me see if you can hear me. Jay, can you hear me? Um, it says that you're. You want to tap in there, Jay? Yeah. What's up, man? Uh, how are you? Um, Good. Are you here? Are you hearing me? Yeah, I can hear you now. Uh, I'm glad you joined okay. us. Uh, let me see. Let me see. Are we recording? Okay, this time we're recording. Um, so. Uh, give me one second. Oh, you Did know you what? We'll wait till later. Anyways, tonight I was going to have. Okay, so here I had. Uh, just give me one second. Let me just explain what um, what the plan was going to be. And um, so, anyways, I had an idea. Um, I had stayed with uh, Tina Kimmel. Um, when I was at the 15th annual symposium at, um, I think what year was that? It was 2018 or something like that. Anyways, um, it was in San Francisco for, and, and um, it was my first, um, I guess, introduction to um, some really top notch intactivists who are at, you know, like that are uh, PhDs. Anyways, Tina is a, a long time, and tactivist and she was running she's a jewish mother and she was um she was running a jewish i, I had a list here i'm gonna pull it up real quick um actually i might as well just pull you up into this so you guys can see this but anyway so I, I i just had this epiphany that hey um because i talked to sarah about doing an interview and she's got some things going on and actually it, part of the um discussion was going to be about how she's dealing with things that are going on, right? Um, you know, when you have, you're a volunteer and you've got things going on, um, how do you deal with that, you know, and how would I want a, an activist to deal with that, you know? So she's dealing with it in the correct way, which is you got to take care of your family first, right? You know, you got to take care of the the little ones surrounding you first, you know what I mean? If, you're, if you can't take care of the little ones surrounding you, you shouldn't be worried about the little kids away from you. So... Um, Anyways, just some thoughts. Um, so she's going to um, – we'll maybe postpone that, but I'd love to do it on, on the meetup. But it, it just depends on, on what her time availability is. But anyways, so I thought about that, and we had talked about that briefly. And, and the reason why I wanted to do that is because I want other um, volunteers to start doing this. Maybe I'd like to do the same thing with James, um, same thing with <clears throat> Patricia or anybody – um, who's been doing this, Scott, as well, you know, anybody that wants to do this. And Jay, I have so apologized about our last meeting um, that we had together because all of that fantastic um, interview that you are, uh, I guess, discussion that we had um, was lost because of sound quality. So I unfortunately got nothing but high pitch sound quality and I tried to even fix it with audio, uh, whatever, equipment and um, even a buddy of mine who's an audio engineer said, you know, that's pretty much not going to work. <laughs> so, so it is what it is. But um, I'd love to talk to you again. And, and this time we have a lot better recording <clears throat> going on. Excuse me. Um, a lot better recording going on. And um, anyways, um, so we will be doing these uh, interviews later. So we might, if you want, we could do an interview with Jay tonight. 
if Jay, you're interested in doing another interview uh, tonight, we could uh, get into that. You just kind of, I'm really glad you're here. Um, but we could do that if you guys are interested in that. Um, I had written out some questions. Usually they're specifically for, you know, Sarah. Um, but um, I can go through and give you some questions <laughs> or we can adapt it. Um, but anyways, I don't even think you need a lot of questions to, um, if you, if you want to just even describe what you talked to la us about us last time, that way we have it on video and we can put this, we're going to put this up on YouTube so that we can make this, uh, um, you know, I can put you, uh, even your name in the title so that people can see what the, what you're about. And we could give you kind of a plug from here because, um, I thought last time I, I, I didn't get really a chance to give you a, an opportunity to, um, share your links so that. Anybody that watches this maybe can help contribute to what you're doing, which um, one of the things that I've said with NLI is about we want to um, we want to not take donations for ourselves, you know. So, uh, for instance, the server I'm paying for, the website I pay for, I got to buy some new software coming up. I actually had purchased some other software. Now I get to use that. So it looks like we're going to have to do a rehaul of the um of the website anyways um but uh so we're gonna got a we <laughs> all the website coming up but um where was i going with that there's too much so it's too much going on at all at the same time but anyways um so tonight if you do want to do a little bit of an interview we could do uh do that for you jay um but anyways besides that um i talked to v savage who is um, a fantastic uh, intactivist. Um, she's very active. She does protests and she's active with, uh, um, let me see here. I wanted to read this to you because she, she has sent it. And so I could get you guys. Um, let's see. Okay. I'm a mom of two intact boys. Awesome. Right. Uh, I have been doing intact activism and advocacy since I was 14 years old. I became aware of the heinous nature of MGM in 2010, and I knew something had to be done to stop it. I found Bay Area Intactivists in 2013. I've been volunteering ever since to do protests and work boosts at local SF for San Francisco Bay Area events. So she's a, um, anyways, I have I've been lucky to run across V Savage in some of the events that I've been to. And um, so she's going to do an interview with us next week. And then the following week after that, is Tina Kimmel, who's a PhD, and she's, I guess you could even consider her one of the uh, circle of the mothers of intactivism, and uh, Tina Kimmel is fantastic. Let me just show you uh, my screen, and you can see coming up. This is in two weeks from now, so um, let me pull one of these up. You guys can all see this, right? And if you can't, I'll just kind of describe it to you. But let me pull these up. These are websites. Okay, um, lawmakers enter circumcision flap. Hmm. I don't even know. Some of these are not even positive towards us, but look at this. This is Tina right up at the forefront. This is when they were trying to get the law passed in San Francisco to ban it. Okay, uh, anti-circumcision activist Tina Kimmel left, confronted state senator. Uh, these senators blocked it. They didn't even let it go to uh, um, ballot somehow. It was really, and then the, then they had this state, um, the, the whole state legislators got together and viewed that uh, banned anybody from taking away a medical procedure. Well, that's great because this is not really a medical procedure. But anyways, um, so this was when they were fighting for the San Francisco. So this, she's been doing, um, she's an amazing activist and I ended up staying at her house. She was, uh, you know, this is, you know, sometimes in, the right and activists band together and help people out. You know, I didn't have a lot of money at the time. And so she just let me come stay and, and basically sleep on her, uh, on her uh, couch. She had this little couch. So it was really comfortable. It was awesome. But, uh, so um, this is uh, Tina Kimmel, PhD. Jewish baby boys are human, have rights too. And those rights are violently trampled by his and my religion. Uh, anyway, she's, She's a Jewish intactivist, so um, I, I don't say these things, and I try to stay away from the religious side of things. My my main focus is on the medical side of things because I think that's the low hanging fruit. I think that's where um, <clears throat> you know 
there's not a medical justification for this. And when you remove the medical justification, a lot of the religious side that's relying on that medical justification and the ignorance of, you know, for instance, just the straight up anatomy and physiology and the basic structure and function of the tissues, you know, like that, that stuff that you just, it's just like stuff you can't deny. You got 80% of the world's men walking around with it, you know, so it's crazy you can't. So, so when, you, when you focus on things that you just are just guaranteed to win, you know, that you just can't lose, to me, it's just more effective. But anyways, um, if I'm a Jewish person, I might have a different perspective. I have slight Jewish genes on um, my mom's side. So um, there's uh, part of our family was dark, and we think that may have come from that side of our family. But um, anyways, that doesn't really matter. Um, she, she even had a genetic test that showed we had slight Jewish genes. So, but, but to me, if I was, you know, like culturally Jewish, you know, and, you know, I was raised that way, then, you know, I might have more of a say on something like this. But to me, it's like, it's not really been my culture that I was raised Jewish. I was raised in a Christian family. Okay. So I was raised in a, you know, white American Christian family, conservative, you know, type of, of family. Um, I've transcended those types of things, but um, to, to see the world in a more of a um, humanistic perspective with a more of a, instead of a relativistic um, moral perspective, what I mean by that is relative to the area that I'm in, I try to see things more uh, objectively instead of subjectively. So that, like there's objective morals out there. And one of those objective morals is don't harm children, okay? And so there's an objective moral as opposed to, hey, you know, we could pierce our child's ear or whatever, you know, those types of weird things. You know, um, it's, if it's harmful for children, we shouldn't do it. You know? you know, and if it makes them, you know, cry and scream, we shouldn't do it. So, you know, it's just, it's just wrong. But anyways, um, how we raise our children is one of the most important determinations of the future that is you could ever devise. You know, if you really want to change the future, fix the, you know, fix how we treat children, how we raise children. One of the most interesting things that I noticed doing Uber driving, believe it or not, in California, was that I met a lot of rich kids, okay? But these kids, they were not like rich kids. Like I had dis discussions with some of these kids I would take, you know, for 45 minutes and they were like 16 or something like that. And they'd have, you know, or whatever and we'd have discussions and these kids were super cool like they just didn't have these you know they didn't have trauma and so they were very aware and cool you know what I mean so to me um that was pretty awesome to know that so I was like this is you know they're raising their kids right in some areas you know hopefully you know that this uh because they just had a more worldly view than I thought I would I would have expected from that group of children from what I've, you know, you typically know is from California, kind of like an elitist type of snobbish type of um, area, especially, especially in, in Los Angeles, which I did do a lot of rides. Tina Kimmel is going to be with us soon enough. So about two weeks. Okay, let's get back to non sharing and we'll have some people talk. Um, did anybody want to bring up anything in particular tonight? before we, before we, uh, because I really didn't want to have like a formal meeting tonight. Oh, you know what I do want to do is let me just finish um, with the, uh, the basic business stuff so I can get that stuff out of the way. Just give me like two seconds and I just want to explain some things. Uh, as far as the campaign number two, we're, we're still like wrapping it up. But I think we just finished me, uh, Washington. Let me pull that up. I'm going to show you guys that real quick. Oh, you know what? I flipped off the screen. Um, never mind. I'm not going to go back into that. But anyways, we're almost done with email too. I know. Uh, but the um, mail system is going to be set up. And tonight, if you guys want to, if you guys feel like you want to, um, or we get bored or something, and you want to see me doing something real, like some something real that's going to have an influence. Well, tonight, I'm going to be setting up an email that's going to be running at 10 o'clock tomorrow morning. Okay, for the uh, first of the um, 1,889 emails from Pennsylvania. And so the Pennsylvania emails are going to start running through MailChimp. And what we're going to be doing is we're making sure that none of these emails are going to bite us in, in the butt when we put them into our, our main email list. So we're going to try to uh, filter through these emails. And what this is going to do, it's going to help 
reduce errors and it's going to whittle the numbers down a little bit to a better quality list. We, we got to be super careful about emailing because if you just send out a whole bunch of emails, you can get on spam uh, problems and then you're not going to be sending any emails and nobody's going to be getting your information. And it's just a waste of time. Um, we do have a backup on that and that's called the web forms because the web forms, no matter what we can send through the web forms. So if like, say for instance, we get a bad rating, um, somehow, some way, whatever. And I, I know there's ways around it. So we could, you know, we start a new server da, 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 and redo everything and then start up again with a lower, uh, with a higher quality list and stuff like that. So there's other options, no matter what along the way that we can do. Um, but, uh, yes, the, um, that's going to happen. If you want tonight, we can do that. If not, no big deal. If we don't get to it, it's no big deal. So I know Jay has a lot to say and I want to, I want to try to recapture what we, what we said last time. Um, but, um, I heard you say it, uh, um, on, um, Brandon Murata's show. That was awesome work on Brandon Murata's show, man. That was, that was really cool. Um, a great video you guys did together. I was very uh, happy to see that, man. Yeah, it was really good. If you guys um, haven't seen that, you uh, we'll we'll put up a link or something, or maybe I can just pull it up and share it with you. You know, um, we'll do that later. I just hate switching back and forth between sharing and all this other stuff. Okay, so um, what else? Where's I going? Did I miss anything? Oh, um, th so the emails we will send that tonight if you guys want to, and then that email will be the first email going to the email list of Pennsylvania. Now the email, um, the web forms have already gotten an email from us. So this is going to go personally to a lot of different people. So a lot of people who haven't heard of that, maybe um, we soften them up a little bit. Hopefully with that first email, we're going to get this email through hopefully. And so that we can do tonight and then we can monitor our progress on that, which is pretty fascinating. And so the next time we meet, I can show you guys that um, how well we did on that progress. And it's really cool to see how many people are reading these things. Right. So all these people are opening this stuff, you know, and some of the titles, I think, are really good at getting people to click onto it. Right. So anyways, um, I got a lot of good reviews on the third email as well. A lot of people re read it. There's some um, basic editing points I need to go through and fix. Um, there's some people had some stylistic views. You know, we could edit those a little bit. Uh, but anyways, um, I think we're going to just send it. It is what it is. So I. Um, if you do want to edit it, let me know ASAP. Anybody that hears this, I'm going to remember guys, I'm going to share this on YouTube. Anybody that hears this um, or is listening right now, if you want to edit the third email or give me some advice on it, make sure you get to that to me ASAP because um, we're going to start putting that into Mautic. And then that first list of Mautic is going to be starting to get sent out. And that's the updated list from, uh, Pennsylvania, I'm sorry, from, uh, who's the first one we put in there? Florida. Duh. <laughs> we put Florida in there. So the email list from Florida has already been through, through two stages and has been whittled down about 400 emails, which is nice. So now those emails are much higher quality. We're going to be sending those uh, soon with email three, which is going to be really cool because once those go in there and email four is going to be done uh, very, very soon written, and then that's going to be put right into that file. And then guess what? As soon as the week goes another pass, those files are going to get sent. And then the next one, the next file is going to get sent. And so it's going to basically go into a system. And as soon as all those emails are done in that campaign and they're on the, on the thing, and I'll, I'm going to show it to you. I have to show it to you. Hold on. Let me just show it to you. Cause it's, it's a really cool looking um, thing. So um, I just want you to see the first email because this is our email system. Can you guys see this? So check this out. Um, we got a bunch of emails in there. Let's see. I always get these confused because there's like not what you would think emails. Okay. I know there's a better way of finding this, but I don't really know it right now. So let me try to open it up. Okay. I have to go through it this way. It's the only way I know right now. But I have to show it to you guys. I'm sorry. Anyways, you're getting a kind of a preview behind the scenes. Okay, can you guys see this? Okay, so um, 
Now, real quick, I'm just going to say this to anybody that's listening. Again, some people might not understand. Why are you doing an FGM thing? Okay, We're tapping into the FGM understanding in America. People already get it here. It's a cultural no. It's a cultural taboo to cut girls here. It's horrific to the American mind. It, it is uh, the American mind correctly understands it. They correctly wrap their mind around it. I'm going to utilize that so psychologically I can help them run the understanding that uh, this applies to all children, right? This applies to every child that's born, okay? Whether wh whatever color or race or religion or um, sexuality or whatever they come out to be or whoever they are that deserve protection from cutting, okay? Intersex, male, female, trans, the whole gamut, all, all deserve protection from genital cutting. Okay, so uh, especially as children. Okay, in order to eradicate FGM, anyway, look at how clean this is. This looks very nice, right? This is a very, um, it's gonna be look nice, right? It's a nice email. So that's gonna be going out and this is kind of like the style of it. This is what it's gonna look like. Um, if anybody wanted to adjust that too, we can, but it looks, in my opinion, I'm really excited because this will be going out just so easily and smoothly. From now on, we won't have, uh, the, the, the web forms are going to be the bottleneck because we still have to always go send the web forms. You always have to send the web forms. It's just part of the, of the campaign, right? So it's kind of, you know, just something that always has to happen. But this one will run in the auto in the background and it'll help us to clean the list and make the list even better and better and better. And hopefully when we start calling these people and we have these phone calls, they're going to come from a high, high quality list and they're going to be people that we can influence and they're all going to be people who have... At, uh, high levels of education and high levels of influence uh, within their area of expertise, hopefully. Because as, you know, doulas and midwives, they can immediately start educating their clients. They can immediately start ab advocating for their clients as well. And then there's going to be a lot of intact mothers who are going to be looking for intact friendly doulas and midwives. And there's a huge gap right there where these doulas and midwives do not have this knowledge and information but these mothers need doulas and midwives with this knowledge and information. So we have an access tap to tap into those doulas and midwives right now through our, you know, we have a large number in California. We have a large number in New York. We have uh, Wisconsin and Missouri. And uh, those are not large numbers, but um, yeah, we have had some amazing work done on the California, uh, all those different databases. And so anyways, we can tap into those people and share this information. And I think it's going to be valuable. So this is going to let them know that, hey, well, first off, we're for protecting all children. You know, there's not one child we're going to say, this is who we're for protecting. We're for protecting all children. And in particular, we're for protecting them, not from, we're not going to go, in, in, in my opinion, our area, my area of focus is not to go to a cultural area and tell them how to run things. That's their way, their position, their place to take advantage of you know, somebody in that area, like I can build allies between them. You know what I mean? Like I'm allies with, with uh, a lot of people who would, you know, support, you know, for instance, in the, uh, who, who are Islamic, who also su support intactivism in Islamic uh, faith and think that, you know, maybe that the Quran has statements that, that are above and beyond the Hadith's statements about circumcision that kind of would, would contradict circumcision. And I would support that because, you know, maybe that's their belief. And I've been told this, this is what I've been told by uh, Islamic intactivists, right? There's a movement in Islam, Islamic intactivists. Um, so same thing for Jewish intactivism, same thing for Christian intactivism. There's people within all of these groups and I support all of them. But uh, as far as my position is, where do I want to focus is the medical side, because that's where the, the really the most um, inequity, the most, the most glaring, weaknesses you know like they literally cannot defeat anything that we say you know they really have nothing to stand on their, their whole argument is so weak it's uh, it's it's almost unattainable anyways um let's go um i'm gonna cut off of this and then so hopefully you guys like that any thoughts on that um, um well, go, go ahead james well, just that if we're going to progress and ma make strides, I think it'll be vital to have Jewish intactivists and Islamic intactivists so that if people say that we're Islamophobic or that we're 
anti-Semitic, then we can say, well, here are these Jewish activists, these Muslim activists. Are you saying they're Islamophobic? Are you saying they're anti-Semitic? I mean, I so I think that having them spokespeople from those groups it, it would be is vital to our success, in my view. I agree a hundred percent. I build it I believe in building bridges. Um and in particular between different cultures and different intactivists of different across cultures, you know, across the world, you know, we're all in the same fight together, in my opinion. So, um, you know, it's just, it's just a no brainer, you know, it's just, it's just a no brainer. You know, we can say, Hey, you know, with probably pretty solid authoritarianism that or authoritative understanding across the board from everybody that you could look at foot binding and say, you know what, that's probably not, conducive to a, a healthy body you know it literally breaks down if, you know anything I, I was a physiologist so i studied like the anatomy structure and function and movement of the bodies and biomechanics and all that kind of cool stuff kinesiology and it's really kind of fascinating but your feet are so important for the for the structure right so when you bind your feet like that and there's no movement that all the spring that your feet do to balance your body over standing you know is gone and so it puts all this stress right up to your body and they're going to be in horrible pain, especially into their, as their body deteriorates later in age, you know, like when they get into their sixties and seventies, they're going to get a lot, a lot of pain, right? Because their feet were binded. So that's really damaging to do to children. So it's probably obvious that, Hey, you know, there's certain things that we should just not do to children, no matter if it is cultural, right? Even if it is a cultural thing and, and nobody sits outside of that bubble, you know, in particular, I get a lot of people, and it's very important to say that, um, that that a lot of people will claim that intactivists are anti-Semitic, and that we're uh, that's that we're anti-Semitic. I'm like that's just it's just the most untrue thing you could possibly say because we believe that Jewish boys have the right to their genitals too. Now I'm not going to get into that that thing. Like I said, that's not going to be my main focus because to me the low hanging fruit again is is the medical side. So. I can just defeat the medical side so easily. I can't go up to a rabbi, you know, and say, you know what, you're just wrong, you know, and convince him. So, um, and maybe I can, maybe there's a certain a number of them that we can, you know, we can say, look, you know, let's, let's start migrating towards Brit Shalom because, you know, once this medical side collapses and it's literally, you know, like the Titanic <laughs> heading towards a, an iceberg right now and um, it's going to collapse, there's just no way it can. And as soon as that collapses, as soon as you take a rudimentary knowledge of the, of the 101 level structure and function of the intact male genitals, the way that, that we are designed to be, it literally destroys the medical side and it literally destroys, well, here's what it th does to the, the hardcore uh, or to the religious the, the extremists, I would say, because if, if you're unable to, to understand child, something that harms children and say, you know what, this is you know, let's not harm children. Let's, let's just put a little solid line around that one right there and say, like, I, okay, cultural, you know, binding feet, you can't, is not an excuse. Um, you know, uh, whatever it is, neckties or, you know, uh, circumcision and all. Another thing that I have to say about that is um, when you, if, if you're an intactivist and you, and you blame Jewish people for this, guess what? Your parents are doing the same thing. They, if they're not Jewish, I'm saying, if they're, if they're white American Christians like my family and, and they um, circumcise you, guess what? They were just as part, just as, just as, as susceptible to those human inequities or these human weaknesses, I guess you could say, to, to follow the herd, to be sucked into this herd mentality of not even questioning or even, you know, considering how this is harmful to cut our children's genitals. That's just... It's, it's just so mind-blowingly ludicrous, you know, to sit outside of it and look at it. Um, um, but even, I mean, well, now being, I'm in it, but um, now that I know about it, it's still, it's almost still mind-blowing that it still happened. You know what I mean? I can't believe it happened. You know, I can't believe that nobody thought about this because they say these things in our culture. When I was raised, you know, uh, and I'm sorry if I'm talking too much, but I was raised in, in an education system, which was, we were valued like, protecting children right you know we were you know the white shining armor the one who protected everybody who was you know it was always the stories that we were taught these um you know um, you know when you watch television and stuff and you've taught these 
wonderful moral nuggets. Okay. This guy valiantly fights and risks his life and, you know, to save the world or to save the child, or, you know, they, they learn some moral thing about how, you know, these, um, you know, uh, bigoted feelings or thinkings of the past harm, you know, our children and stuff like that. And they, they, they have these wonderful messages, but here, this does right in our, right in our face, right in our own culture. And it's doing, and we're doing it. That's, and we're doing these things that we should be obviously against, you know, everybody, everybody should be so obviously against this. It's just a no brainer. And I think, I think as more people open it up to it, as more people hear about it, as more people just even think to question it. I didn't even think to question until I was 36. Like what kind of brainwashing is that? Like, I, I, I mean, I can tell you something. It's even kind of weird. Like, um, I'm going to go ahead and say it because fuck it. I don't give a fuck about my ego. I have a zit on my scar line that I get to pop every three days. I've been doing it since I was 16. A zit, right? And if I don't pop it, it whatever it is, that little pus just builds and it sits in there. Isn't that what great to think about? I'm sorry I have to say it, but I mean, like that's a fact, right? Like I'm not going to be scared of facts. I'm not going to be scared of, you know, sharing facts. I'm not going to hide my ego. I'm not going to say this didn't happen to me. This happened to me. And you know what? I, mean, I have to come out and say it. You know, like it's not my fault that I have to milk my zit every three days or whatever it is. Sorry, sorry if I forget sometimes. <laughs> you know, I'm sorry that's disgusting. But trying to make a joke about it. Anyways, Jay, I'm gonna um, try to talk to you a little bit more because you had a fantastic story, and um, I don't know if you if you have much time to if you feel like you want to talk about it like you did last time. But I would love to just get back into it. And like, I don't even know where to start. There's so much um, that you, we talked about last time and it was a, a fantastic. I apologize that we, the audio doesn't, that, well, that's why we moved, migrated back to zoom is because of the audio issues. And hopefully uh, we don't get any uh, people popping in and out that we don't that are uninvited, but it seems like that's not going to happen tonight. So anyways, Jay, I'm going to um, open it up to you. Can you describe a little bit, maybe start with um, uh, for the viewers who, weren't here the first time that didn't get to hear your excellent uh, because Jay's talk was fantastic. It was, it was amazing. It was eye opening. It was um, it, it really because the way he described it, I would, I guess I would say it gives you insight into how his culture utilizes um, these differences, utilizes uh, these male body shaming tactics to, um, to gain political benefits against certain tribes that they want to hold down or certain tribes or areas, I don't even know what, um, to call them correctly, um, but uh, certain groups um, to hold them down and, 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 and limit them from having political power. So that was very fascinating. Um, and also how it, um, that you were actually a victim of, of this U.S. driven, um, um, and, and it's disgusting this to to know that I that, that I ever paid tax dollars into something that could have harmed somebody like yourself uh, in a way that I would um, I would never have agreed to, to allowing to happen in my name. You know what I'm saying? We all have to pay taxes. You know what I mean? We're forced to pay taxes, but um, and you know it's sad that to hear dishonorable ways in which way in which the, that money is being spent, and especially something I have to um, I'm so vehemently against that I have to literally dedicate large portions of my life to. Uh, being against but anyways i'm gonna let you talk about it jay because your story is fascinating you know i don't know if we where you want to talk about it maybe how it happened to you and and i know that may be painful to talk about and keep over talking talking about it but i really think that that side of uh, the story that you have is very powerful as well so um go ahead and jump in here jay i'm, I'm sorry I'll, I'll shut up for a minute as, as you were discussing and talking about uh, the scientific and religious support, uh, actually, I wanted to add on something small. Uh, I think that could be a good startup point uh, to continue with uh, whatever I said last time. So yesterday, I was having uh, some discussion with uh, an activist from, uh, I think she is from, from the US. Uh, he was talking to me, he's a Christian, and uh, he was telling me that uh, he's doing God's work. Uh, in order to stop people from getting circumcised, which I said, okay, fair enough. He went ahead and said, uh, you know, uh, there's a way God uh, puts up things, uh, you know, where people are supposed to be this, people are supposed to be to stick on something. For example, he said, uh, you blacks, you are supposed to, you know, 
uh, to stick on your position. We are also supposed to stick on our position. And uh, he talked about some people are cast. You know, I understood his point of view as a, as a Christian. Like a, he is a Christian. You know, he he was using as a, a he was using religious approach uh, into fighting circumcision, uh, which to me it was somehow you know the way you said you're using scientific, which at least you can have a proof. Now, when you're using uh, the religious approach, uh, you have some things that uh, are not going to come out right. For example, the thing that uh, wasn't going to come out right was demeaning another person. For example, he said blacks are supposed to stay where they are, like your cats, you see, and the whites are doing God's work, you know, preaching the message and not supposed to be circumcised. Now you see the conflict that was coming. So I was listening to him, but I felt like a little bit, you know, some racial slurs were, were coming out there. I was listening to his. He had a good message the way he was talking, but then, you know, with religion, it's always contradicting. There's a lot of contradicting parts. You say this, but the other part, the Bible says that. So it's a, it's a, it's a kind of an approach that makes you feel like you're being recolonized, you see, when you use it. Uh, but with scientific approach, uh, you're having facts. You know, it is true. When you circumcise, you're still going to get HIV AIDS. There's no way the Bible will tell you that when you get circumcised, you will get this or you won't get that, you see. So... The religious approach is very contradicting because even with the Christians, you see they have different type of religious groups and there's no way you can change somebody's thinking. For example, you cannot go to a Muslim and tell them, you know what, stop circumcision. Because for them, they say they support it. But the way you can tell them to stop it is through a scientific approach. You can tell them, you see, you can give them the statistics so people have died out of it, you see. So I would say in a modern world like now where more people are becoming as an atheist, it would be better to, you know, to approach them in a scientific way. Because I will approach you in a religious way and maybe you're not things. And from that point of view, you start judging and, you know, everything I'll tell you, you won't understand it. You'll be like, no, I don't believe in God and why is he telling you this and that? So I believe uh, your approach is good, the scientific part, which uh, actually most of us in Africa, we lack that. We lack the yeah, scientific me too. approach of things. Uh, <laughs> we, we lack the scientific approach of, you know, of things, uh, in, in the real things that are supposed to happen. We take things in more of a religious and cultural approach. Which to me, it's still backward, you know, because when you look at uh, the culture of stuff, someone will tell you, uh, we used to do this in the past because it was bad. We are now supposed to stop doing this. Or someone tells you we are doing this because our ancestors did it. And you keep asking yourself, if we stop some other things, why are we not stopping this one also? I is it also bad? So we are weighing, we are caught in a, in a, in a matter of weighing the lesser evil. All are evil, but are now taking up the lesser evil, you see. Like in the past, people used to marry nine years old, 12 years old, you see. So you ask yourself, if people used to marry nine years old, why are we not marrying them now? Because it is something that is bad, you see. What about circumcision? Yes, our ancestors did it in the past. Don't you think we should also stop it now because it is also the same as Spain? A nine-year-old person is someone who is not yet mature in the brain to, to come up into marriage, you see. So people thought that, okay, they are not mature, the pain, the everything that comes with that marriage, let's stop it. And if you look at all these things, it goes back to pain and the mental stability. You know, if you look at the things that were done in the past and compare them now and why they had to be stopped, it told us to go more down into the mental stability of everything. You know, you know, you know what, you know what really was it? I'm just going to jump in real quick. I'm sorry. I just want to say this. You know, it was really interesting to me about just to, real quick to what you're saying is like, you know, because I talk about I was just mentioning how um, I, I try to focus on what I consider objective moral principles like you know you shouldn't harm children you know just as an objective moral principle like that objective means you know it's not subjective it's not me it's just a principle of of good of of good, being good human humans right and you know if you take a picture of, of a of adult next to a nine-year-old okay you just see the difference in size and you know you know this is you know adults should not be married to a nine-year-old it's just it's just not right you know the child is just too young for that and they, the child should be playing and enjoying life and, and experiencing the, the stages of development to become an adult to make those types of decisions you know what i mean and and make those decisions in a healthy environment where they're encouraged to you know to explore their life and understand their life way before they get into those types of things that you know that's those are adult things adults think about those you know when you have hormones and you're an adult and you're you're aware of yourself and you're aware of the choices that you're making. You make the correct decisions. You know, you can be in a relationship with somebody and, and, and 
you know, or, or whatever you decide to do, but you're an adult, you know what I'm saying? Anyways, I'm going to give it back to you, Jay. I just want, I just want to, the main thing I just want to say is the difference in height. When you see the difference in height, you can just, you just objectively know that, you know, there's certain truths, uh, moral truths of this world. And, you know, um, no children should be put in a position where they are compromised. That's all I'm saying. They should be protected from harm. Go ahead, Jay. I'm sorry. Uh, that was just uh, a little bit of an introduction. So anyway, I'm Jay, I'm from Kenya. I'm an interactivist from Kenya. And uh, you know, this, uh, this whole thing is too personal to me because uh, I've passed through it and I've also lost people who are so close to me. Uh, my friends, uh, like last time I told you about. I was circumcised uh, when I was about uh, joining, I was joining high school and finished my primary education. We have an 844 system, eight years in primary, four years uh, high school, and four years in the university. So that's our education system. So when you finish it here in Kenya, most people, when you finish uh, class eight, the eight, the class eight, you're supposed to join from one. There's a long holiday there where every, every boy is supposed to be circumcised uh, through that holiday because now you're not going to go to school, you're just waiting to join, to join up. It's uh, about uh, six, six months, yeah, six months holiday, five, six months holiday. So during that time, I come from a village in Kisumu uh, where we don't circumcise. Like uh, we know Kenya, we have 40, 42 tribes. Uh, the, the 42 tribes we have, uh, we are divided into different regions. We have the we different sub -tribes. You have the Nilots and the Bantus, Kushites and the Semites. So you find uh, the Kushites, who, uh, which are most of them are, Christ, uh, are Muslims. They do circumcise because of their religion. Uh, then we have the Bantus, who don't circumcise because of religion, they circumcise because of their tribe. Then Can I ask you a question? Can I ask you a question about yes. that? Did the Muslim, yeah. did that tribe that has, because that tribe has converted to Muslim in modern times, like for the past 2000 years or whatever, 6,000 years, whatever, however, however long it took for that tribe to become Muslim, did they circumcise prior to that? Were they, that's a, just an anthropology question, I guess, but did they circumcise prior to that um, the religion? The religious aspect. I'm just curious if you know. Okay, yes, yes. I, I, I know their history. Uh, these are not the original tribes. They are uh, mixed with Arabs, the Kushites, and the Semites. Uh, and actually, if you look at Ethiopia, uh, most of them come from Ethiopia, then they came to Kenya. They are migratory tribes. Oh, okay. that, uh, used to, they used to trade with Arabs in the past. So that's why the, the religion thing comes. They're they not the original. Let's say they're not the, the original tribes in Kenya, but they're just a mix of Arabs and Africa. So yeah, yeah. mostly they took the, the culture of the, of the Arabs because uh, that's where, you know, through trade and all that time, uh, that's how the genetic uh, formation was, you know, disoriented. So, but we take them as Africans. We take them as, the funny part is we take them as Africans, but they see themselves as Arabs. Actually, they, they hate to be called Africans. They say they, they're Arabs, but they stay in Africa. So you see the Egypt, you go to Egypt, you find Arabs there, but the Africans, but they call themselves Arabs. So that's how it is. My tribe, uh, we don't circumcise. We don't circumcise. I, my, my thought, my interesting, I just want to just get this thought that um, I, I did study a little bit of anthropology. So there's one important concept that I think a lot of people miss when it comes to anthropology is that um, when you look at a, a certain genetic strain of humans, right? That, that's where we... If there's certain migratory pathways, of course, as human migrated all over the world that, you know, the different genetic strains are going to go different areas. And that's part of just, you know, the awesomeness of, of humanity and diversity of humans reacting to different environments and all that sort of different things that people are exposed to in different environments, which is pretty awesome. But in, in anthropology, there's a concept called Klein. And a Klein is a certain group of genetically similar people, right? So though, that's how you would be able to trace back where someone originally came from. And so, you know, when you talk about certain tribes that, are, you know, grab, you know, that, that, that enculturated or adapted certain cultural adaptations of other cultures, my, my, my theory, or actually my questions really kind of relate to where did they actually genetically come from? And that's their client. So that would be an anthropological term. They're genetically similar people. Where did their anthropology come from? And how do they mix and mingle with different cultures? But that's also fascinating too. I, st I studied cultural anthropology. I don't know if you ever heard of that uh, concept, but it's basically studying how, um, you know, for instance, sociology is the understanding of 
you know, I just took basic classes. Okay. Like one one level classes. These are not like, you know, super duper classes, you know, any, um, but cultural anthropology is a study that's fascinating to me because I think the diversities of, of, of human experience and cultures and all those things are fascinating. But anyways, so you certainly, you learn how enculturation happens. And so how cultures change and, and how cultures are influenced. And that has a big determination of whether or not you live in a cutting culture, whether you don't, right? So this is what we're dealing with. And it's very important for us to understand these cultural differences. And Jay, you already, just because I, I think you have an insight that is unique that I just want to highlight for my viewers is that because of your cultural experience, you, you are experienced, you're in a more of a cultural melting pot than we are, to be honest with you even though there's a lot of different cultures within America, but in your talk and you're talking about in, in your area, you talk about these different tribes that have different ways of being, you know, you have different languages, right? You have different, uh, I, and I'm not sure I'm, I'm, I'm not, I'm talking from an outside perspective, but from what I understand about cultural anthropology, a lot of these, a lot of these tribes, for instance, still even have different languages. So one tribe can't speak to another. You could have tons of different dialects where people don't even understand each other, even though they speak the same language you know, even if they're differently removed, they could be, you know, secondly removed cousins and still not even understand each other. It's pretty fascinating. But anyways, that's just some things I wanted you guys to think about because, um, you know, I think that's important to understand is how cultural influences, not just any Klein, it's not, it has nothing to do with Klein's. It has nothing to do with your genetics. It has everything to do with your culture, nothing to do with genetics. So if, if we can stop attacking declines which we, we supposedly are when we you know talk about race or these superficial things these are the issues that we have in our culture with with bigotry and, and racism and stuff if, if if we can attach the human condition to the fact that hey you know what um my parents did this to me and they're you know these people that just you know and your your culture did this to you it doesn't matter where we come from. We all have to deal with the cultural problems. These are cultural problems that have nothing to do with our race or clients. And that's an important concept. Okay, go ahead, Jay. Yeah, so, you know, during colonization, there's a, you know, when there is Campbell competition for Africa, the whites that came, they understood very well that uh, Africa is grouped, you know? So they, they put boundaries into groups. So that's why it's very hard for you know, one culture to love the other in one tribe, let's just call it a tribe. So they mm. came and regrouped, whereby they made sure that this group and this group and the other group will never unite no matter what. So if you come to Kenya, you'll find, uh, when you go to the highlands, you find the Kikuyu. Like the, the, the more you travel, you find a certain area different like that. You see, here you find the Kikuyu, you find like that the tribes are like with boundaries, you see. So it is very, it's, it's very clear, like my tribe where I come from, we don't circumcise at all. Actually, if you read if you read my our history, you read everything about us. Yes, we are religious. Yes, we are to we colonize. But most of us are Christians. Some are even Muslims, but we don't circumcise. That's according to our religion. But uh, around uh, 205, around 206, 207, there uh, there was a campaign uh, pioneered by USAID in conjunction with the Kenyan government uh, that uh, targeted where I come from, because you know. I come from a fishing community, and you know, with a fishing community, there's a lot of poverty in most cases, uh, a lot of you know, uh, early pregnancy, teenage pregnancy, there's a lot of sex going on there. So there's a lot of HIV where I come from. So they came up and, uh, with an ideology that uh, if you get circumcised, that my people are getting the virus because one, we don't practice circumcision, uh, we have poor hygiene, you know, they, they put up, they scrambled up a lot of things, you know. So as to support their agenda. So they came and said, uh, we are going to circumcise people from my tribe uh, around less circumcise. They had a target. They wanted to circumcise over 5 million boys from my tribe. You know, hopefully, you know, persuasion. So imagine something you don't do. Then someone comes and, you know, they put it up on you that you're supposed to do it. And uh, they, when they came, they came with that. They, they looked at a problem, you know. They looked at the problem and they saw that uh, the biggest problem that we have in my place is HIV AIDS. So when they came with that information and told our parents, they told us, you know, in school, school started showing us, you know, those tapes of HIV virus, the way it is and all that, trying to compare, you know, comparisons so that we could, you know, the visual, visual image is always very strong. So they showed us that if you get circumcised, you are not going to get HIV AIDS. And if you're 
involving sex, uh, you're also not going to give your partner cervical cancer. Actually, it was running concurrent cervical cancer and HIV AIDS. So they came to villages. They were walking around villages and uh, you know promising hell, I mean, promising us a lot of heaven on earth. You know, if you get circumcised, you're going to get a uh, free education. We're going to go to university for free. We're going to educate you. Uh, they were also giving us some incentives, like they're giving our parents sugar. You know, when you're poor, you anything they do for you, you just you know you just accept it because you maybe you don't have a choice. So I remember I was among the one, the first hundred boys to be circumcised from my village. Because when they came home, I'm raised by a single mother. So and my, you look at my village, you find a lot of graves. This one died of HIV. You know, a lot of parents have buried their kids. So when they, they came and found them in their mental situation, you know, sometimes you cannot make right choices when you're not stable. You know, a friend buried somebody, if somebody was buried, like there are a lot of graves where I come from, mostly HIV AIDS. So when they came there, my mom, they talked to her and I uh, was among the first, among the first 100 boys that went there, went for the circumcision. So they organized the date for us. After organizing the date, they came with a van. Uh, they, put us, they put us in that van and then they drove us to that in hospital where we were, we were to be circumcised. So when we reached there, there was a lady that talked to us about uh, circumcision. Hey, slow down there, Jay. You're get, we're getting that. Um, there's a lag. Hold, hold, hold on, hold on, Jay. When um, when that lag happens, I want to catch you because this, what you're saying is so important, and I don't want my uh, this video that we make to be compromised in any way. So I want to make sure we get exactly what you're saying because you were just really getting into something actually important there. Can I? Can you just rewind? I'm sorry to break your 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 concentration. Can you just rewind a couple seconds because you were just cut off. I apologize. All right. Uh, I was saying like uh, in my village, if you come to my village, you'll find a lot of graves and uh, most of them are HIV, you know? Uh, so when they saw that, they used HIV as, a, as an excuse to pass the message that if your boys get circumcised, no mother will ever bury their son, husbands, you know, you, you get it. So you find that, uh, okay, they organized the circumcision, they came to the villages, gave them incentives like sugar, uh, free primary education, free secondary education to university level. So when parents felt like that, you know, coming from a poor background, you know, the load is getting off from you. They have no choice, you know, but to tell us the boys, you know what, you have to sacrifice for the family. You go get circumcised so that at least, you know, you see we have struggled, we have suffered, so that you can go and get both, you can get education free. Because they know, first of all, like I said last time, my tribe values education so much. We actually in Kenya, we are the highly educated people. We are highly educated. That's one for sure. You know, if you look for engineers, if you're looking for the best engineers, they all come from my tribe. If you look for the best doctors, uh, the biggest lawyer in my country right now is from my tribe. You know, so cultural but, cultural has this huge influence on on culture has this huge influence on us. You know. So that's a if, if your cultural values, you know, and tell you know education, then your culture is going to go after it. Um, just real quick, I wanted to say something that was fascinating. I, I knew a friend of mine who, um, she, she was a um, she she went to Africa and she created this uh, system with this guy that it was a schoolhouse. Well, anyways, he was a doctor and uh, he went to uh, on vacation and uh, these kids end up gathering around him and he started teaching them. And this in, in this culture, these kids would travel like, I mean, and you, you hear these stories, it's cliche almost, but 10 miles on foot. Literally, these kids would drop, would walk 10 miles barefoot just to get this, and he was there for a little while and these kids started telling all the kids. And then he ended up creating a like a, a whole cultural, uh, um, not cultural thing, but a whole education system in Africa through uh, some donations. But it was really cool. It was a whole nonprofit that I helped contribute to back in the day. But the kids there, they just, they were just so hungry for education, that they would walk 10 miles through, you know, barren desert, uh, you know, carrying their water with them, you know, with very, very little food, just to get some knowledge and education. And, you know, we're so lucky in some other areas. But so go ahead, Jay, I'm sorry, I just wanted to mention how fascinating it is that that, that culture has such a strong influence on who we become. And that, that's why uh, it's, it's so important for people to understand this and let go of these old uh, ways of thinking that uh, it has something to do with religion or you know whatever to me it's just it's it's cultural it's how we were raised go ahead 
Yeah, so when they when they realized that that's the major problem, so they came up with that uh, information that you know when you circumcise your boys, there will be no more. You never bury your kids and all that. So that day, I remember the fateful day they came for us uh, in a van, in a, a van. They, they drove us off to the hospital where we found there. First of all, they they you know they were giving us orientation. They had some wooden you know wooden pennies, uh, the circumcised ones. So they were trying to talk to us. You see, they're trying to compare. Uh, they, they are two, 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 two the one, the one that is circumcised and the other that is not circumcised. So they are trying to look at the, they're telling us, you see this one, the way it is circumcised, the way it is clean, you see, those are the ones they were using. So you see the lady, a lady will love a guy who has this penis. Because I know you're still young boys, but when you reach the dating phase, uh, most women will choose this. You see how strong, actually they even put it, they made it look so huge and strong. You see how huge and strong this penis is? Because it is strong like this because it is cut. And then another thing, uh, you see sex. If you have sex with a condom, you don't enjoy much. But if you have sex without a condom, you will enjoy sex. And the only way for you to enjoy sex without a condom and not get diseases is when you're circumcised, you know? So, so they were introducing us to sex. You know, we were still young. Uh, most of us were around 11, 10, 12. So they were talking to us about sex and, you know, a lot of things that we were not even capturing. Some of us were even feeling very shy. You know, most some, some that were nine years, you know, they, they, most of them didn't even know, understand what these people were talking about. Then from there, you know, I just remember put in a room and then they took my the thumb injection. The penis was very painful. I remember that very well. They took, they injected, they gave me around five because they, they, they inject you, then they, they, there's a pin they use to feel if you're still, they ask, are you feeling any pain? So they first, they, they gave me a first injection on my penis. They used that pain on the, they, they were tapping like this. I was still feeling pain. They gave me a second injection tap i was still feeling pain the third one a fourth one a few but i think my body wasn't reacting to you know so when i was still feeling pain they just said i had them you know in my language they said let's let's just let's just do it uh then they, they cut me i remember they cut me some person they just came you know with a season and all that they cut me and then they put our bandage after two minutes i felt the most 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 pain that you know i've been stung with a bee some time back I've, I've also been stung with the worst, but this pain, I don't know, I've never in my entire life, like, if I, if I was to compare the pains that I've, I've passed through, even the bee stung, the worst, it, it, is a, it was so unbearable. So I woke up in some dingling pain, you know, feeling some numbness and heaviness down here. I was also breathing. Then they, they remove you from that, they remove you from that room, they put me outside. Uh, now imagine, the worst part of it all is, you're, you're being put in a group of other boys that are also waiting. So it's like, you're, it's like a sheep going to a slaughter. You're seeing that one sheep has been slaughtered and now you're also entering, you know. I could read the fear in the other boys' faces. They were looking at me crying. Imagine, they have not been circumcised yet, but they're seeing me who is seated there. I, I, you know, a, a grown-up man, I was literally crying tears like I was, I was in so much pain. How the old were you? Were also looking How old were you, Jay? I was, I was around 11, 11 years. 11, 11 years, years old, and th this was a U.S. sponsored circumcision clinic. Yes, circumcision clinic. Yes. Did, yes. And did, did, did they offer you anything for to do this, or did they did they give you yes. anything as a gift or something? They gave our parents sugar, uh, tea, uh, tea leaves, the, the sugar, salt, you know, blankets, nets, you know, such basic things. Uh, you know, here in here in Kenya, sugar could be around one dollar. One kg, one dollar. So they sold us for five dollars, you know. And a net is around 300, uh, 300 shillings, which is also around one dollar in, in the US. So if you combine all these things, then the biggest thing is they told us they will take us to school for free, you know. So that was the biggest cut for us. Most of us, we, we looked at our background. We, was basically, I looked at my mother. I said, because I, I, I had done my class eight, I'm now waiting to join, you know, high school. So I looked at my mom, I was like, you know, she's a single mom. I don't think she could even raise my school fees. You know, because here education actually is very high, it's very expensive, and schools are, uh, education goes by the school. Uh, you find the best performing schools uh, actually have a higher school fee. The low ones that will make you look like someone who didn't go to school, uh, they, there's a way they have put it. They make sure that these schools in the villages will never perform. You know, they don't give you the things they're supposed to need, like good teachers, uh, books, you know. They make sure that the good schools are in town that all of us wanted, you know, most of us wanted to go to those good schools in town, you know, because of the performance, also exposure, you know, you're grown in the village, you, you hate that village life. 
so you want to go somewhere else. So they told us, you know, you'll take it to the city, you're going to study there for free from, from high school to university. You know? So most of us, we were sacrificing it for the education part. You know? We didn't even bother much about uh, any other thing because we were really eager, we wanted to go to school. So I was there, the second said, all of, around that day, we were around 100. They took 100 boys that day. After circumcising us, we were after that seated, we met with a group who were crying, like, you know, we were just there, our parents are not there, we're just with strangers, we don't know what's next. Then they came, they gave us, uh, each of us, a bottle of soda. After giving us soda, they drove us back to our various homes. And that's the last time we ever saw those people, I'm telling you the truth. That is the last, last time. Nothing, no education, the one they promised us, nothing. That is is the last time we ever saw them. Now the, the recovery part was now the most most painful. You wake up in the morning, you know, you're having a, a, a you're, you're, you're the so, blood, so blood is clot. Can you can you can you um I, I don't want to I don't want you to get graphic, but how what were you awake when this was happening to you? Yes, because uh like I told you the injections they were giving you are not reacting to my body. That's why they gave so me they gave you two part. injections. They gave me two, three, four, five, and I was still feeling the pain, you know, because there's, there's, there's a needle they were using. They inject yeah. you one, then they pierce you, they, they, pierce, they take that needle to pierce your pain. They ask, are you feeling any pain? I was like, yes, I'm still feeling it. So when they gave me the fifth one and uh, my body was still not, you know, they said, uh, I had them say, ah, let's just, uh, you know, let's just cut him. You know, I was, I was not asleep. I was seeing, every, I was like this, seeing everything, the, the way they were doing everything. I, I was seeing everything. They, they had this uh, some Caesar something that looked like a Caesar, you know. Did 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 you I have a little... feeling? What what was your feeling inside when this is happening to you? And I'm sorry to bring up bad memories or any trauma that could have you feeling um, upset or anything, but what was it going through your head? Did do you feel like something was wrong that was happening to you? Um, you know, as a child at this at that moment, um, did it feel like it was, you know, some you know like you were gonna feel the way you do now about it? Obviously, you feel strong enough to do this so or have conversations about it so um did, did you did you feel any i'm just curious what was your feelings at the time at that moment uh my life was there they have their hands uh i was the, the pain that i was passing through you see the funny the thing is about pain at most times when you're feeling pain you're not even feeling pain or the exact pain that is, something that is happening to you i was feeling i was having severe headache up here I was, you know, that, that moment whereby you're trying to be, you know, to show that you're strong, uh, but at the same time, the pain is too much. It's, 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 it's like having, if, if anyone is, is anyone has ever, you, you, if you talk to people uh, who have been, those people have pierced their nose, they'll tell you, when you pierce your nose, you tear up immediately, you know? There's that shock, the shock wave, you know? So I felt a shockwave when they started just cutting it immediately. There's a sudden, there's a numbing shockwave that I felt through my brain. Uh, I felt like uh, in a slaughterhouse. Let me just say that, because you know, they, okay, it, where I come from, the penis is, is a, okay. Every man, every man, whether you are still a young boy or you are a what, you know how important the penis is, and you know how painful the penis is. I don't know why. Maybe because it has a lot of nerve ends. Because I remember uh, as a kid. When I was playing, when I was a child, uh, I took a, uh, there's something that I took a small pin, and I inserted it. You know, the, you know, when you're a kid, you're very curious about things. I inserted a pin inside uh, that opening of my of my penis, and that now exact now you see the pain. It, it actually it gave me a flashback. You see, the funniest part is it gave me a flashback of the pain that I went through as a child when uh, when when they, when, when they were removing the pin from my penis because there's a time I inserted a pin here. Through this opening, you know, just out of curiosity, then you're curious about things. So that is the flashback that I was there seeing at that moment, you know. So, but they took it was allowed a two minute surgery. So they do it, they did it for two minutes. Can I? Can I? Um, okay, go go ahead. I, I don't want to interrupt you, but I do want to. Don't let me forget to ask you. But I, I just want to ask you if your uh, overall temperament changed before and after, like the way you were as a person, maybe how you reacted to certain situations in life. Um, you know, um, did, did, did this carry on? Did it change you in any sort, sort of fundamental way? Yes, I've, I've had a lot of changes. First of all, uh, if, you, if I look at that moment in my life, one, I hate doctors. That one I'll tell you for free. I hate hospitals. I'll tell you that one for free too. Like, I have never, ever since I was circumcised, 
I have never, never gone to the hospital. Now tell me how many years ago, you know. From the time I was at when I was 11 years, uh, this month, uh, my birthday is on the 1st September, uh, actually I'm making, I'm making 31. If you compare all those years up to now. You're 31 now? I've, this September, yes, I'm, I'm making 31. 31, well, happy birthday early. Thank you. So if, imagine I have never gone to the hospital. I don't like hospital. And yeah. when I become sick, I just pray I get, I get healed by, you know, I go to, actually I go to, I, I love Googling things. I say, okay, I have a small headache. Let me Google the drug. <laughs> I go to the, to the clinic to buy a drug. You know, I hate hospitals generally. I don't blame so, you. It makes sense. Even when I, even when I had a, there's a time I had an accident. I was working as a tout, a tout and uh, I fell off a moving vehicle. Uh, so when I fell off from that vehicle, you know, that was a huge accident for me. And uh, I was to go to the hospital, but I didn't go. Are you seeing how grave now this is, this is to me? Because I had an accident. I was a tout. Uh, then uh, I fell off a moving vehicle. The, the, the door, you know, us in Kenya, when, 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 when you're a tout, to hang on the door when the vehicle is moving. So when the vehicle is moving like this, it hit a bump. And then, you know, I left that thing and fell and rolled on the road, you know, several times. Oh, wow. And everyone, when I, what I remember, everyone was like, hey, take it to the hospital, let's take it. Oh, when I had the word hospital, I, I swear to God, I just woke up. I told How old were you? I'm good. I'm good. At that How time, I was with... around 20, At that time, I was 23. 23. 23. Wow. Yes. So it affects you all the way to 23. Um, another thought is, um, <clears throat> I'm just curious because um, you have a lot more insight, I think, than uh, a person there, there's a study called the cancer study. I don't know if you ever heard of it. It's a study uh, that they did on Turkish boys. And what they did was they took, uh, I don't know if you know anything about psychology, but there's a, a person called Sigmund Freud who did child psychology and stuff. So anyways, um, a psychotherapist or a psychoanalyst is the kind of from the Freud school of psychology. And uh, I mean, it's considered kind of somewhat, you know, not necessarily modern psychology, but it really was part of an initial study, but it really gave you insights. It really gave you some valuable insights. Anyways, so this cancer study is a psychoanalyzation of the images that these kids would draw before and after. And so some examples are the kids, you know, had these bright pictures of the family and they were, you know, running together and there were rainbows and, and, and bright, you know, these are six or seven year old kids, right? So then after the circumcision, they had drastically different pictures where the kids were like, you know, uh, regressed like f physically where they were smaller or they were being attacked or this, there was no sun. And, you know, it was these, I mean, it's just a total, total study of these kids. So you see them before and after. And, and so my theory is, is that um, the earlier this happens, probably the worse it is in the mind. Um, and, and so as you get more older, you were able to conceptualize it more, but you're also able to understand it on a level that I, I could never see as a, as a, you know, cause this happened to me when I was an infant. So, um, did you notice anything different between your group of friends before and after, because a group of you did this, did you, did you notice yeah. how this affected, I'm sorry, go ahead. Uh, the, the circumstantial thing affected us, like, uh, you on a personal level, I'll tell you who is, I'm so like, I'm so forgetful. Like you see, my brain maybe is trying to make me forget. A lot. You know, when sometimes when the brain starts trying to have a healing process it tries to cut off a lot of things from you you know mm -hmm. so that you don't remember a lot of stuff i'm so forgetful like i'll at my age like i'm i started being so forgetful you tell me this and i forget about it like you know so i'm seeing a lot of drastic changes from me you know? so forgetful uh i get i i used to get a lot of nightmares so i became that made me become a lot and a drug addict actually to the but that wasn't beforehand you didn't have those. You didn't have those nightmares before that time period. No, you see, for, for, for us in Africa, we get mature very fast. Like you have to be a man very fast. You are eight yeah, years. Yeah, yeah, of course. You really think like a man, you know? We have people who are having <laughs> sex when they're eight years, six, six years. They are already having sex. So, so at at, uh, at, uh, at my age, eleven in Africa, you're an adult. You know, like they consider that an adult because you can now take care of the family. You can now even build your small house there in the village. You know, you're you're an adult. And then to put in, into more perspective. When you're raised by a single father, you're now the father of the home, you see. So you find that uh, I was in an adult situation at a very young age, you know. So I understood my environment very well, uh, that they could compare my life, how I was functioning, you know, because uh, you had to function very fast. If you're, if you're here, if you progress, you just have to function very fast. So I, I used to do, there are a lot of things I used to do perfectly, you know. 
And when you compare how things started coming out after circumcision, a lot of things, a lot, a lot of things have changed, you know. So my friends, the, the ones that you were circumcised with, most of them, first of all, the thing that they really made me, you know, they, they killed most of my friends because is one, they told us that uh, you won't get HIV. So most of my friends felt invisible, you know, having raw sex everywhere, you know. I have a friend, you know, uh, after when, you know, like uh, after getting circumcised, after getting healed, he wanted to test how the penis functions like how the sex is, he was like, you know what? Like he was very eager. You know what? I've not had sex after, you know, being circumcised. I want to go and try and see how this sex feels like when I have a first kid. You know, most of them were like that, you see. So you find the recklessness. Most got STDs. I have one that, you know, they fear to talk to the parent. You know, man, hey, I'm having something. My penis is bleeding. I have a problem. I don't know what to do. My penis is so painful. So... I was easier to talk to because they always, I don't know, I don't know why they used just to come to me, like, you know, we are group, you know, like, well, friends, you know, you're, you're teenagers and all that. So you find, and I also loved Googling things from a long time. Because <laughs> I had, uh, when, when I, had, I had my cows, when I saw, I saw some, this a profit that I made, I loved phones in the past. So I was the first person among the groups to have a phone that, to, you know, could access internet too. So when someone, I loved Googling a lot of information my young age even actually because one we didn't have access to books so you find that if you're doing a if you're studying let's say literature and there's a novel that you want to read and you don't have access to it i discovered that actually you could type the title of the novel and you could get a, a, an entire information about the book and read it you know so i love i love googling a lot awesome. so when someone comes you know they're having they're having this i was like man that's an std that may be your, your, your obstacle if you're, you're urinating and it's burning Go get antibiotics. You know, I knew about antibiotics at, a, at an earlier age. You know, <laughs> so you find that uh, three, three of my friends, they got HIV AIDS. Uh, two are always these were three circumcised guys. The circumcised guy, the one that okay. I was now close to. Forget about now the other one. That they went through this with you. Know. Yes, they, they, they were a group of hundred boys that went through with me, and that's the same thing. So the, the, the ones that went through with me, most of us, we, we lived closely, you know. And most are raised by single parents, you know, no father figure, nothing. So we were the fathers, we talk to ourselves, you know. If someone has a problem, we, we come in, we talk to each other as boys. So you find that the three, uh, two committed suicide because of the virus. Uh, like, you know, they were so sick, like, it was painful. Like, my, my closest friend. Like, you know, he's someone that I used to talk to so much. We were so close, you know, we had our dreams. You know, he wanted to be an engineer in the future. And when he got the virus, it really, it really finished him off. Like, uh, he was so depressed, you know, nothing could make him happy at all, nothing. Like, and, uh, you know, when we heard about his death, it really, it really pained us. Like, it was so painful, you know. He died of HIV AIDS. And uh, you know how ignorant the villagers are. They said he was bewitched because he was smart. But for us, the boys who used to talk to him, we know what, what he was ailing. You see the problem? He had the virus and still couldn't get access to, medic to medicine because also the cultural thing, they believe that uh, when you're sick, actually in my village, when people are buried, they say he was bewitched. You know, they believe that. Instead of just saying it's a virus, they all just believe. So even him, the parents are like, oh, you know, this is my only son. I've parted three sons. I am bewitched. They don't want me to progress. But for us, the boys who are close to him, we knew that he had the virus. Because at least we knew what HIV is, you know. We even so we we went to we even went with him, you know, for, for, for the for the test, you know, and it became positive. But we couldn't tell everyone, you know, because of his he told us, you know what, just don't tell everyone. You know, as friends, you know, we just had to keep it like that. But we know that he died because of that, you know. So it was very painful on his funeral. You see, the mother was really crying. Like she had buried over three boys, three sons, you know, to the same. Because if you look at the pattern, it's just the same thing. So well, Dino, really did you good. know? Did you know that there's a, one of the um, one of the uh, uh, I guess you could say like intactivist with the highest levels of education. His name is Brian Earp. He's an ethicist at the Yale University. Uh, you probably heard of Yale. It's a um, like a Ivy League school or whatever. But anyways, um, you know, it's obviously not easy to get into those schools. So you have to be pretty, pretty intelligent. But he wrote about this. And what he wrote about is, is how the, um, the, the campaign to uh, say they're lowering FG, uh, uh, HIV is actually causing higher rates of FG, if, uh, HIV because it's creating, causing these men to feel, 
mean, he literally wrote about this to feel that they're immune from it and that they're, they're selling it like a vaccine. You know, this is like a vaccine. If you take this, you're, you're, you're a vaccine, you know, you would think that, Hey, if I'm, you know, I took this vaccine from something and I'm within somebody who has this, then my immune system is going to take care of it. Right. That's what a vaccine does. Right. Well, this is obviously not a vaccine, but it's being sold like it is a vaccine. And we've, we actually have, I mean, I, I could share the link with you. I want you to read it. It's, I mean, he's a fantastic writer because um, he's very, very intelligent, but his writing is very, very uh, matter of fact. And it's also very, it's, it's still very easy to read. It's very easy to, if, if you ever heard of Brian or PhD, he's a very, very uh, smart and activist, but I'll share his information with you. But he actually wrote about this and you're an example of this actually happening. So it's, it's, it's actually, uh, it, it's important to take note that that's actually been, you know, you're an example. You have three friends that this actually literally happened to, and it, it's a it's it's gut wrenching and it's outraging, and it's sad. And I I, I feel um I'm, I'm sorrowed that this happened to you and to your friends. Uh, that this that my culture had anything to do with this, you know. Uh, and I apologize. So sorry that this happened to you and your friends. Right, so Go ahead. I'm sorry. I I don't mean to interrupt you, but <clears throat> now now let me ask you this. Oh, go ahead. Go ahead. So that, that that's how the old the old situation went by, you know. So we had to, you know, move on. Like for example, uh, I got called for school in the city. Actually, uh, I was lucky enough because me, I'm also an, I used to be an entrepreneur. And I'm actually like uh, I had my chicken, I was wearing chicken. We had our cows and all that. So you know, they, they you know the lie they told us about you know being able, they are going to take us to school. Actually, they didn't. It never materialized. You know. So I got my first term school, my school fees for first time. I sold my, my most of my stuff that I had. Uh, I joined a high school for one. Uh, first time I started very well. Actually, I was uh, in my first uh, when I it, uh, it was a mixed school, you know, I was a boy girl school. You know, it was very different from this other other types of boarding in Kenya because most Kenyan schools are actually you the, the, the boy school and then there's a the girl school. The one that was called in uh, was actually. Uh, a mixed school. And I would say this was a blessing to me because it made me understand more things in a sexual uh, life about women. Uh, because, you know, here we were just being told things on hearsay, you know, women love this, women love that. You know, a, a man telling you that, but not a woman telling you from their perspective, you know. So you find that going to that school really changed my life. I would say that it's the best thing that ever happened to me because I was now interacting because I used to be a very shy person. And I, I used to fear most girls, you know, uh, after that circumcision thing. You know, if this is something you change. You see, you're, you're raised in a, in a community whereby your girls, they're used to seeing people are not circumcised. You see, you are now in a community whereby you're being circumcised and they're now going to introduce this to your girls, something they have not seen before. Or maybe if they have seen it, they've not seen it that much. So you feel there's a change in you. You know, you feel like, ah, Maybe the first skin who used to make my, my penis look bigger. You know, Africa, we are all about sizes. <laughs> you know, we, love, we value things when it comes to sizes. It's, it's the same know. everywhere, bro. <laughs> it's the same everywhere. <laughs> it's the same. So you find, so you find that you feel, I, I swear, I used, to, I used to feel so intimidated, you know, because we, we, we shower, we go to the, the river, we shower, you know, we, we boys, we shower, you see penises, you know, we, we are free. So you are comparing and you're seeing your penis. You're comparing to these other people, the ones that didn't, didn't you know, you, see, you know, you find like theirs is a little bit bigger than again yours. You feel like yours is not strong enough. You know, there's that feeling you just feel among boys, you know. So that used to intimidate me so much that I, after my circumcision, I like actually it took me a long time to, you know, to actually engage in sex, you know, because it was something new to me again. I was used to what I was from the past. Now this is something they're giving me in a new perspective that I was not used to. So when I went to school, I loved biology, actually. I loved biology so much. Like, uh, it's my best subject that I performed so highly. Uh, biology, English, literature. Uh, but I hated maths. Maths was so hard for me. <laughs> maths was very difficult. Uh, but uh, with the other subject, you know, the arts and the sciences, uh, physics too, I loved physics so much. And that uh, performed very well. Well, physics so, is math. Go... <laughs> physics is a lot of math. crazy. Yeah. I love physics because uh, I love wiring, like I love playing with wires a lot. I love the practical okay. part of it. Actually, I love the practical part of things. <laughs> you know, you know, with math, there's, there's no much, a lot of practicality. You see, with math, again, it's more of, uh, you know, equations, you know, <laughs> remembering things. And uh, like I told you, I'm not good with, you know, 
uh, yeah, I mean, you know, remembering a lot. Of it's just so boring. A lot of the scope, yeah, it was very confusing. But with physics, uh, they could bring us wires, bulbs, you know, connecting batteries, and you know that play, the, the play in it made it more fun for me. So that's what I loved most. So you find how I came to know about uh, the dangers of this circumcision when my friend passed. Because of that, it opened it opened me to you know to read more again. And then I tried I started comparing statistics. They told us that this thing because you look at the ranking with the HIV ranking. My region is still ranked high, despite the fact of this uh, HIV, uh, this, this circumcision, you know. So I sat down and told myself, why, why, are they, why is the government doing this to, to us? Then I started understanding the political aspect of everything. You know, when you grow up, you are, there's a way you, are, you start acquiring new things that you love in life. I started loving politics too. So when I started yeah. seeing more, when I started, you know, seeing the political aspect of, of, of everything, I understood that the world is actually ruled around you know, power and politics. Everything goes back to that. You know, we might think that the world is ruled by science, but I'll tell you, the people call the shop is the political part of it. You know, you can come with the cure of AIDS, but politics is going to stop it. Politics is going to say hide this. You see, so I I, I started viewing life like that. Like okay. My people are always segregated. We, we are highly educated, but we have no jobs. I see, I have master, you see someone is having, having a master degree, someone has degrees, but he's still in the village. Then you find someone who can barely talk English, is actually an MD of a big, huge company. You know, if you look at the name, it's a Kikuyu. You know, we have Kikuyu and Lu, the most, you know, the most tribe that are least they say powerful or maybe concerned about politics in Kenya. So you find, uh, Mostly the Kikuis were being employed by the government, you know, and us we were being left to you know care for ourselves. So I started asking a lot of questions. Why are they doing this? 2000 and uh, uh, there's a year 2000, 2008 actually we had a post-election violence. Now that one opened my eyes to me to to circumcision. Now that's the the part that really made me realize that circumcision is a huge thing in Kenya. During this election time, uh, we had a leader from my tribe that, that wanted to be president. And then we also had a leader from the other tribe that is powerful, that has always been president. They used to, you know, the ones, you know, like in Kenya, we have cities that are metropolitan, whereby other tribes also live there. But the cities are poor, the tribe that, uh, that, that come from the, 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 the major tribe, you know, the ones that are in power. But you find other people because of jobs, they, they run to such huge cities, you know, let's Pretend now, let's say my city is New York, and then New York maybe is ruled by let's say or let's let's now like because of your country is all about white and black and Hispanics. Let's say New York is a, maybe a white neighborhood, right? Uh, blacks are coming from maybe other place, states to New York because of jobs. The blacks, but when they come there, maybe they are still going to be viewed as you know, even though they are they have these qualifications, they will be like this is our city. You're supposed to take it back. You see, now that is the thing that happened during that election time in my country. The Kikuyu tribe, they came, they had pangas, they had knives, you see. They were forcefully circumcising lures. They will ask for your ID. They look at your ID and they see your name. Because we see here in Kenya, they know that your name signifies a tribe. If your name starts with a letter O, in my tribe, our letters start with O. When you start with O, you're a lure. Look at uh, your president, the former president. Obama, Obama, if you look at Obama, is a Lua, you see, that's why they all. So it's for my tribe, actually. So Your tribe is Lua that. tribe? Yes, yes, yes. Okay, so, that's awesome. Well, cool. So Obama, the father is a Lua, you know, but he married a white person, I think. So all our tribes are saying they're old. That is if you're a Lua. So they look so at a, a, a Lua, uh, so, so you could say that a Lua, a Lua tribesman, if I'm saying that right, and I apologize if I'm saying that wrong, a Lua tribesman was the president of the United States. Yes, yes, yes. That's how I'm <laughs> is, yeah. That's kind of cool, man, <laughs> if you think about it. <laughs> yeah. So, <laughs> so you find during that time, they were they, they could you know that's scary, you know, so that you can run away and leave that place. A lot of people are forcefully, even if you are circumcised, they'll say they will circumcise you. You see, because we have laws that are also Muslim that are circumcised, you see. They'll find you on the road. They ask you for your ID. You show them. Or, or they'll talk you with their language and you don't understand the language. They'll definitely say, you're a Luo, you see. So many people are caught up in this mix. 
if you look at the if you look at the, the, the research, actually leaders were taken to ICC, the International Criminal Court, and the number one thing why they were taken there, one, you'll find forceful circumcision of other tribes. That's the, the group that's genocide. The UN group that has genocide. They were targeting a tribe through circumcision, murder, people, people's heads were being chopped off. You're circumcised, then your head is chopped off to send a message. Because they believe that uh, as rules, we are not powerful because we don't practice circumcision. You see, that's how they believe. They believe for them, they are circumcised, and during circumcision, there's something that person, the traditional person, places them with power, you know, prosperity, uh, a lot of things. You know, but all these things, if you are someone who's going to school, you'll realize that it's all political alignment. You know, the politics favors them. That's why you find that they can get loans. If I go to get a loan, they won't give me a loan because of my name. Then they get loans to start business. You know, there's that. You see, people talk about uh, racial, you know, in America, world, but I'm telling you, yes, yeah, it's, it's painful because a fellow black person is doing it to you. You see, it's always very painful uh, when. Uh, you know, like black on black crime, you know, it, it's very huge. It becomes more painful when the, the same person you view as your own brother, you know, your own, you know, if, despite the tribe thing, they're still, you know, they're still black and all that, is putting you through that, that system, you know, systematic racism. We have it here in a yeah. tribalistic, uh, in, in a more tribalistic view, you know. So, I mean, if you look back at, if you look back at like uh, all, all throughout human history, this is every, every group has had this, you know, like, um, and just, just real quick, interesting, I just wanted to say this before you move on, because I, I think this kind of just relates to this, is that I, I think that people that, have, that do this are more warlike. They tend to be more aggressive. The men tend to be easier to dominate and control. And this is what I mean by that. You think, doesn't that contradict that a men's are more, man is more aggressive, but he's more easy to control? Not really, because when you look at a man's behavior or a human's or any creature for that matter, we live on these fight or flight um, rest and digest systems, right? So as we get excited, our heart rate increases, our blood rating increases. Uh, our, our, um, one of the things that happens if you're in fight or flight, you know, we've all heard these terms, is that um, the brain, the frontal lobe itself, our thinking part shuts down. That's why when you get angry, you have a hard time discussing things and, and you, know, you, get, you let those emotions go through. These, these are actually, if you think about emotions, they're actually chemical molecules in your brain. And as these molecules get cleared out, then you can have a clear discussion with whatever you're angry about. But you can't have a logical debate when you're angry, right? And that's because your frontal lobe shuts down. Well, if your stress fight or flight reaction has been hyperactivated, and this is a result of trauma, and this is one of the first, uh, it's called an adverse childhood experience. Now, if you're 11, you're, that's a, you're a child. You're still developing. You're still growing. That's an adverse childhood experience. And this creates trauma that actually affects the brain development of the person. Right. And this is why one of the theories is, is the earlier it is, the, 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 the more hidden it is, you know, you have a, it's important to talk to people that have had this happen as they're older, because they're going to have, they're going to be able to understand both better than, than, you know, like, obviously, but anyways, uh, yeah, that's, that's all I wanted to say is that, is that this actually affects our, our the, the culture itself, the, who we become. So if you're a tribe that doesn't cut, and you're surrounded by these other tribes. Uh, what I would say is very interesting is to think about how the nature of these tribes as aggression wise. I'm sure there's some uh, tribes that are very, that their, their culture can overcome an adverse childhood experience and can help them still grow. You know, trauma happens to everybody. We still can, re we're, we're resilient creatures. We can overcome our trauma, you, you know, um, but, you know, but um, I mean, it does have an effect and it has a residual effect. On, on who we are and who we become. So my, my, some of my theories and is that you can, you can actually tell, you know, I lived in Germany when I was a kid and the, to the Germans compared to the Americans were vastly different. The Germans, they, that they view violence or like as kind of like beneath them. Right. Whereas the Americans, the, the violence was dominate. I'm going to dominate you. I'm going to control you. I'm the cool guy. I'm the alpha guy. That's how it was in America where in Germany, it's like, really you're going to resort to violence when we're thinking human beings, right? That was like their culture. It was like, but it, it had aspects to it. They were very dominant and very controlled. You know, that's how they're very regimented. Um, it's just them as a culture. Um, but I noticed this vast difference between our behaviors. And, and, and the interesting things was how the Europeans would react 
to the Americans where they were, they would actually become unsure of themselves because the hyper aggressive Americans would cause them to become, to have this almost a cultural backlash where they would start to become aggressive themselves. And I noticed this with a lot of Europeans that were intermixed with Americans. So all of this was happening before I even realized all this stuff about circumcision. And now looking back at it, I can put the pieces of the puzzle together and kind of understand how this influences not just, um, you know, ourselves sexually. Okay. You know, okay. That's a pretty big issue, right? Like um, we want to have the full experience of our bodies, right? That's what like uh, kind of like, you know, makes us, you know, like, Hey, why, why wouldn't we want to enjoy part of the best part of our lives? But in reality, the real problem of this and the reason why I really do this is it's a harm to the child. Like it has nothing to do with my sexual life, you know, although it, it, I know it's harmed by this, but it really has to do with this harm being done to children because this affects their mind and who they become later. And you're hearing this trauma from Jay's firsthand experience. And it's, it's, it's enlightening and it's, it's uh, it takes a brave man to be honest with about this. So I really respect you. I'm going to shut up again. Um, thank you, Jay, for saying, for being so honest with us. Uh, go ahead and continue. I, I want to um, keep on breaking you up, but I, I want to uh, interject. Go ahead. Yes, so you find that uh, they're using tribal politics, you know, to make it look like uh, we are the other tribe is successful because of circumstances. And when you when you look at this through social media, you know, now people like uh, here in Kenya we are now very active on social media. You find that uh, when you're having a debate, you're talking something sensible, and you out debate the other person, they'll say, "I cannot talk to someone who is uncircumcised." You go circumcised first so that you can come to me. We have a, a you know a discussion. When a politician from my tribe comes and says something, you know, against the other tribe, against a politician from the other side, you'll find that the, the talk will be, we are coming to circumcise you. Like they joke around, like, they don't know that that is genocide. Like they, there's a way they talk about it to make it look like, you know, it's, it's a right for everyone to, you know, to do it. You know, like you find, uh, like now we are, we, are getting, we are getting back to the campaign season. You know, the circumcision thing comes during campaigns. Next year we are we are voting for president. So you find uh can you, you, find can, you us, uh, a, can, can you do me a talk on can you do me a favor and, and um record some of this and then send it back yes. to us so we have so we can see some of the propaganda. That's why earlier I was showing on, on the video, I showed some uh, on the screen, I showed some images of the propaganda. It's important to see both sides. when you understand how propaganda functions and works, it's really uh it, you can really see it. So I'd love to have those images. Uh, so this, there's a season for this. It's fascinating. Go ahead. Yes, yes. Actually, I've been taking screenshots of, uh, of social media. Like, uh, if there's a political post, I've been screenshotting the, uh, the, those comments. You know, those circumstantial comments. Actually, I have a lot of them in my. I have them as friends. Send an email. Uh, you find the one person is okay. The, in in Kiswahili, circumcise. They, they say Tahiri. They say Tahiri Kwanza. You go get circumcised first before you talk to us. You see. So that is the the the, the, the main thing that is now happening in Kenya. So uh, when I started this campaign, you know, people here, they take it as a, mostly, they, they take it as a joke, they laugh about it because, you know, they, they know, they think, they feel, you know, if you're not circumcised, uh, one, your, your penis is dirty, you know, you know that there's that condition. But they don't know that uh, most kids uh, who, who, are, who are coming from the places that are not circumcised is because, one, they don't have water, you know, the government does not give them water. Uh, most come from semi-arid places where by getting water is so hard. That's why you find that hygiene also from them is, is, is a challenge, you know. They are not putting that in super strict that say that, you know what, maybe these people that come from this other side, maybe the hygiene part is because of the, again, the political, you know, formation. You know, we are not giving them enough fun. You know? let, let me say this. Yeah. Let me say this. I, I took this uh, course in... in um in, uh, in the, uh, I guess, the microbiome of the body. And it talks about how the, um, you know, it even talks about people that, that they stop taking showers. And what ends up happening is their body develops this natural microbiome over them. I mean, if you think about it, we're animals. So our ancestors didn't take massive amounts of showers every day with a whole bunch of soap, right? They didn't have access to that. So I'm sure they had you know, environment, you know, for instance, uh, I, I, I have an interesting thought is there's this yucca plant in, in the Southwest of America, which you can find the root and use the root for, for soap, like a soap like, but the thing is, is our ancestors didn't have to bathe for days and days and days. Uh, animals don't have to bathe. You'd create a natural microbiome. So the idea that the, our natural body is somehow inherently diseased that we have to wash it incessantly with 
you know, or else that we can't survive in the natural world is just totally antithesis to the whole uh, understanding of natural selection. It's basic biology. So when you understand basic biology, you understand that, hey, we're creatures that are designed to live in nature and, you know, that we're designed to live without our dicks rotting off, you know, and, you know, it's just crazy to think that, you know, um, that I, I understand that if you're not hygienic, that can, you know, can cause problems, you know, and there's ways of even taking care of yourself hygienically living in the wilderness completely in nature. But like, I, I um, it's just, you got to be careful of, of the kind of like the ideas that our culture has given us the idea that we have to shower every day to, you know, to wash our bodies. So we don't smell a certain odor, you know, that our, that back, back in the day, we didn't do that all the time. You know, we didn't have these showers. I lived in Europe and Europe's Europeans, you know um, you know, there's glaring cultural differences, you know um, the women, when we would go to the, the, the um, water pools, they would arm, they lift their arms up and there would be like a big old, hair bush. And I'm like, ah, you know, because I'm not used to seeing women with armpit hair, but that's just a natural part of our body. Right. And I had a cultural, um, you know, uh, experience that like, I was not used to seeing this kind of like what Jay's saying about not used to the women, not used to seeing these men that are circumcised because they're used to the natural intact man. So anyways, okay, go ahead, Jay. Sorry about that. Uh, so, so you find uh, like that, the, the political part of it, but then uh, when you view the circumcision campaign in, in Africa, uh, you find that uh, it's focused on women, you know, the FGM. Uh, we have huge organizations, actually huge artists like uh, Beyonce, you know, they put in money for, for the fight of, 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 of the FGM. But then they, there's even a law, in my country we have a law, if you got circumcising a woman, you jail for over 10 years, you know, or you pay, uh, you pay 10 million, you know. So you find that uh, the laws that are here actually work on the, in the opposite. They, 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 the laws are created to you know, protect the women from FGM, and then there's no law that protects a man from anything when it comes to circumcision. You know, I have, I've, on my page, Stop the Cut, you'll find I even shared a video of a boy who died recently. Uh, he died uh, after he was circumcised and he, he bled to death. Uh, there's, gotcha. another, there's another link, I, I sent it to some other, other inductive guys uh, about a man from that tribe now that circumcises. The man didn't want to be circumcised. He ran from that tribe. Imagine, after running from that tribe because of circumcision, he later died at uh, 70 years, he died. Of course, uh, he has family. After dying, do you know that before burying him, they circumcised him? Can you believe that? He was yeah. circumcised, he's a dead man, a dead man. You know, there's a link I sent, it's a story that, Actually, it was last week, but one, it, was, it, it went viral. A 70-year-old man, dead man, they said a 70-year-old dead man has been circumcised before he was well, born. You know what? They At least he got to live 70 years with his whole yeah. genitals. You know what I mean? At least he got that. So good for him. It's desecration. Yeah, it's, it's, it's a horrible thing. It's, I mean, it's a horrible thing, but it, it's... You know, at least he got that. I mean, good for him that he got to live his 70 years. So he was from a tribe that, that cut, right? That, that circumcised him. But you know, yeah. the, 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 bad thing, the bad thing about this, uh, this story is most people are now, you know, they're now feeling like, you know, okay, I think I need to get circumcised. You see, now that's the bad thing again about the media. There's a way they put things to make it look like, you know, you know the people are now, his, his story is again, is going to add more people to be circumcised, you know. Because that's shame. You don't want to shame my family. You see, the guy died now, the shame, you know. How come I, you know, they feel, I don't know, like, I'm always trying to understand from their point of view. Because we have also other tribes that circumcise in Kenya. But they don't value it that much. You see, some don't even, you know, some of them don't even circumcise at the end of the day, you know. But then there's this one tribe that has made circumcision a huge thing. And the sad part of this is they're the ones with money, they're the ones in power, you know. So I keep asking myself, like, Actually, in most of my Facebook posts, I asked one day that like, why is circumcision so important for the Kikuyu tribe? Why is it so important? And you see, most of the answers were it's an in initiation. When you're circumcised, you're not a man, you know. So I asked them, what makes a man? I asked them that question. And then you find uh, some very pretty answers, you know, uh, what makes a man, you know, you become successful. Uh, then I asked them, there are people who are very successful, you know, but that are not circumcised. How come that you're saying to be a man, you have to be circumcised and, you know, 
it's it's a tribal thing for them. And then also they say they pay in the past. They, 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 actually, that, that's what they say. That I went through much pain in circumcision that I cannot settle down with a woman with like this, like this, like this. You see, everything to them starts in circumcision and ends with circumcision. You know, because I, I hear their, their ritual actually, the ritual they do is uh, they cut you with a, with a razor blade. That's the, the tribal circumcision for them. Uh, no anesthesia. You don't have to, during the circumcision, you're supposed to stand there as a man. If you catch the hand of that person who's circumcising you, your family owes them a cow, your family owes them a goat. So you see, like, they value it so much because they feel they, they stood. It's like passing through the toughest moment of your life and not dying, you see. That's how, for them, they view it at that, at that point. That's why sometimes when you talk to them about it, they feel like, you know, other people should also do that. And if you don't do that, then you'll never be. <laughs> That's so weak-minded. It's a very yeah. weak-minded position. Now, the good thing is, what, what is now happening that is good, that I, I, I can say it's good, is now they are women. You see, like, uh, they're, they're, these men, because of their circumcision, they have, you know, they have that strictness in them, like, they don't treat their women very well. And you find that uh, my tribe, uh, they, they, they actually, we treat. They, they, actually, they always say that my tribe is the most romantic tribe. <laughs> they, they they put us. I don't know why they view us as, as Americans. Yet you're black. They say if you if you get a Luo guy, it's like you've got an American person. They like they will treat you good. I don't know why they have that connection in them. I don't know why they think like that. So you find that their women are, are actually interested in most of us. You see, and their women. <laughs> In, on Facebook, I, I've seen this debate a lot, a lot of times, which is good. Uh, the women say that uh, men that are not circumcised are actually better in bed than the ones that are circumcised. And they say they cheat on their husbands with the guys that are not circumcised. And now that thing pains them. And for me, I, I, love, I, love, I, love, I love the debate how it's going. Because, you know, in Africa, mostly people are just sexual, like 24-7, they think about the sex part. So when you, when you bring a topic about sex, People are going to come give you more ideas, you know. People are going to talk. Even if you go to those groups, you know, Facebook groups for, for ladies, you find that the most topic they put there is about circumcision, the, the ones that are circumcised and the ones that are uncircumcised. They even say if you have sex with someone who is circumcised, you're not enjoying it. And that's the discussion that is in Kenya now, you know, which to me, I can say it's a, it's a blessing. Like, uh, if, if it will take the women to change their mind, then it will be good because one, uh, most of them, like, you know, the, the addicts to alcohol and all, so they don't even get in, they don't, they say that the men don't satisfy them. So they feel like when they have sex with other people from other tribes, they are getting satisfied. And this is making, making intermarriages possible, you know. In the past, it was very hard for someone like me to marry from that tribe. It was very hard. Now, we have most people, actually, we have a guy who, who has married the daughter of the president who is from their side. And the guy is, is, is a lure from my side, you see. So th there's a lot of connection that is, 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 is getting connected. And then again, the, the, the president is opening up to us, which is also good. Like now the president actually is now working with the opposition leader from my tribe, which, has, which is very rare, you know. So the, the political, you know, that, that, that political tension that was there in the past, whereby during, during election time, my people are being targeted for circumcision. I'm feeling like it, it's reducing, you know, but then there's still those people are still stuck in the, you know, the, 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 the people are still stuck into that, you know, that's the condition thing, the, the, the ones that are not liking again the, the, the working atmosphere, you know, they're like, why, why, why is this person working with the other person? It's not, they are not, we are not supposed to work together. You know, we have that group too, you know, they are very strong. They have their own ideologies on that, that you cannot change their mind about that. So I think the condition in Africa has a lot of challenges, you know. Despite the fact that we have you know, freedom of, of expression, you know, because you are fighting two powers. You are fighting people who have money, who are sponsoring things, and then there's you who have ideas, you know. You have do, you think, do, you ideas. Think do you think it's dangerous for you to talk about these issues in your culture? I get a lot. I get a lot of information. I get a lot of inboxes, threats, actually. Okay. And uh, last time, I, I think, I don't know whether it was through you or through the other interview. At the time I was arrested, I told you that about the same thing, but they used Corona as a disguise, you know? So you see, it's like fighting a government. You see, when you're talking about circumcision in Kenya or any other ideology in Africa, uh, it's, uh, it's like you're fighting the other person. It's like you want to, you know, you, you're trying to give them a different thing. You're trying to cut donors who give them money, you see? 
Because we know sometimes when a donor realizes that whatever they're doing is counted with a lot of negativity, they might stop, they might stop. So when you talk about, uh, but there's a time when IMF was giving Kenya loans, a lot of loans, and the loan, the money was not being used very well. Kenyans went to the IMF group, co commented and even gave them a poor rating. At the end of the day, IMF the page had one, one star rating. You know? it, they, so you see, it reached them until the CEO had to come and address the nation, had to talk, the IMF clinic. CEO had to come and talk. So you see how how this thing is. When a country, when people talk about something against the government, the donors might have a, a different view. So at a point, you see. So you find uh, when you talk about this, actually, we like we say, you always start with the people who are close to you. When you're talking about circumcision, um, I'm glad I have, a, I have I have a cousin that I talked to. He was to be circumcised too, uh, which he later said is not going to be circumcised. That's what I'm so happy about. <laughs> Congratulations, man. That's a high five. Thank you. I was surprised. A guy from Spain, actually, recently. Spain, also I don't know where he, he got to know me. He texted me and told me, he's a teenager, he me, I have a problem. You know, I was so surprised. You know, he was actually even uh, interpreting, he was going to Google and writing in his language and coming to, he told me, you know, I don't understand English very well, but uh, I've just uh, interpreted this from Google. You know, I was so surprised. I'd say, okay, so this movement is going very far. He said, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm 17 years old. I stay with my parents, and uh, my parents are, are Jewish, and uh, they have this ideology of, of circumcision, you know, and uh, I'm scared. I don't want to go, but I'm still living under them. What, what can I do, you know? So I told them, uh, you stay with your parents. The, which one do you love most? I first asked him that. Which one are you close to? Are you close to your mother or you're close to your dad? He said, you know, I'm close to my father. Then I said, you know, ask men if it's a man-to-man -man talk, Try and talk to your dad. Don't fear, you, you know. He's like, no, but uh, I said, you know, if you want to be a man, act like a man. They will take you exactly. as a man if you act like a man. Exactly. Yeah. You get it. You get it. I, I tell people this all the time. <laughs> if, if you if you think that being a man is following the herd off to having mm -hmm. half the, the most important part of your penis cut off, you're, you're that's not being a man. That has nothing to do mm -hmm. with being a man. That is absolutely being, mm -hmm. you're being subservient. What that means is you're so insecure with yourself. You don't have enough security in your own self that you would stand up for yourself, basically, is what it is. Yeah. Because, you know, um, who wants to have a less less uh, quality experience? You know, you're, we're missing a large portion of the most sensitive tissues of our bodies. Large portions. And, and it, it damages. Not, we're not experiencing the same thing as our intact brothers, no matter how we want to sugarcoat it or tell ourselves that, you know, we're fine or, you know, the experience is not that different or it's a big difference. And we don't, we can't even, I mean, you probably have way more experience. You can probably talk on that, but um, I, I just know that I know math and I know math tells me that if I'm missing the Meisner core possibles, the, the, the lips, basically like the most sensitive parts of our bodies, our fingertips, our lips, our eyelashes, you know, those have miser corpuscles in the frenulum, the ridge band, and those are gone. So that part of our genitals, which has the most sensitive parts, is literally gone. So it's just a math problem. It doesn't, you know, so we're definitely missing out. But anyways, it is what it is, right? We got, we got to deal with it and we got to protect the next generation because that's where, why yeah. we do all of this. Anyways, go ahead, Jay. Yeah, so I told him, you know, I asked him. You know, you, you know why your father is a father? He feels like he's the man of the house. He told me, I don't know. It's because he has his own ideas that he talks and, you know, he has his own authority. People, men love authority. Everyone in the world loves authority. So if you, you're 17, to me, okay, maybe with your constitution, maybe you still view yourself as a young kid. But let me tell you, stand up to him, talk to him, you know. It has to be a, a conversation. Then he asked me, if he asks, what if he tells me, ask me, where did I get this information? I told him, you know what, parents love that their kids are reading. Tell them you read someone, you did your own research. He will be very proud of you that you, you're reading. You're not, you're different from other kids. It's like, okay, I get your point. So he actually had a conversation with the parents. He talked to the, the dad. And uh, I was very happy that this thing, actually, he, he, they, talked, they talked together. You know, he, he, he told me after some two days, he came with a very good information that, you know, what I talked to my father and he told me that uh, I can't circumcise or I can't if I want to, that I have a choice. I was like, oh, you see, what were you scared of? You see, parents now, actually, I told him this is not like the other time. You see, at this moment, your parents actually will even listen more to you because they, they fear, they know that things have changed, you know. 
it's only the government that makes it look like it has strict laws, you know, because of those ideologies, actually. But uh, your parents, they view life differently from the way it was, you know, in the past. In the past, your parents will force you to go to church. Do they force, force you to go to church these days? No, they don't. You see, they, they're trying to adapt. And I was happy. I told him, you know, if you have other friends to, uh, I know you have a lot of friends, please kindly talk to them. You can actually be the first interactive from, from, from Spain, you know, because I tried to ask him about Spain. How is their second vision there? You know, he told me it's huge there, you know, and that, that. So I told him, you know what, you can actually live for something. You can start something. And he he taught, he's he, very proud of you taught him a lesson. I mean, um, when I was in the military, um, I ended up jumping out of planes. I used to be so scared of heights. When I first went into the military, we were on the uh, was in St. Louis. Um, and uh, by the way, I'm kind of a total pacifist now. So I'm not about killing anybody for the elitists of any of any government or organization. But uh, back in the day, I was my dad was in the military. I was raised that way. So, you know, I was in the military, but I was so scared of heights that uh, I couldn't walk around the balconies. And here I was jumping out of planes in the military, rock climbing, doing all kinds of crazy stuff. When you overcome your fear, that's what being a man is, doing something that's hard. So it's hard for him to sit there and say, you know what, I'm going to go against what he's telling me he wants, he wishes for me. That's You have to stand up as a man and, and say, you know what, I'm, I'm going to stand up for myself. You taught him a lesson. You know what I mean? That's a, so, such a valuable lesson. And the opposite lesson is here is – Oh, hey, you're just, I'm just going to do, I'm going to do what, what makes you think that, that makes me tough because then you're going to respect me because I need your acceptance, right? It, a man, you don't need somebody's acceptance. You don't need someone to okay what you believe. You have that in part in your soul or who you are as a person. You don't need somebody to tell you what, what you believe. You know what I'm saying? Uh, anyways, go ahead, Jay. Sorry. So that is how, you know, like my dad before, I used to, you know, before I posted about circumcision on Facebook, I used to feel like, what should people say? Don't think I'm that. You know, I used to have that, uh, that feeling too, you know, what would they think? Then I realized that, you know what, if I lost people close to me because of those things. You know, maybe whatever they thought about me mattered more than a million people on Facebook who just come and, you know, they react to it in, in their own way, you know. So I told myself, I know, I knew, I told myself, I know I'm alone in this for my country. Uh, maybe there are other people, but maybe it's not important mostly to them. Like it is to me because, you know, it's something I pass with something that I've lost people close to me. I told myself, I'll, I'm going to post about it. I'm going to be very active about it, you know. So, you know, the challenges that uh, I was facing is, you know, you go, the people that need this information mostly are the people that take advantage of you. If you're in the town, we have we have always this thing that if you live in your life, you make the choices, you know. In the village, you find that most people don't make their choices. Their choices are made for them by people they think no more. Actually, if I go to the village, me, they, 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 they value me as someone who was, who was going to school, because I'm going to university, I, I, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm educated, you see. So whenever I go on holiday, people come ask me questions, you see. That tells you that if I have the right information, it's good for them. Yeah, and, and I like that you. I like to, yeah. So if they're so if they're seeing me as someone who can give them the information they need, you know, applications of university scholarships, you know, the, the, the available scholarships, you know, such important information, I thought to myself that you know what, maybe let's take let me take this thing to the village, other than trying to fight it so much in town here where people have the information but they still don't want to use it, you know, because here in town I've not even seen. Uh, I've not even seen an adver uh, advertisement that you know you should circumcise. They're not there in towns. But when you go to villages, you'll find signposts, male free, male circumcision. You know, you'll find a lot of it there in my village. A lot of signposts on the on the roads, yeah. you know, billboards. Any, take pictures of that. Uh, if you don't, if you have them, I'd love to have those because um, I want to get that as well as the anti-FGM campaign uh, stuff. Okay. The anything that's anti-FGM is I think is is valuable to. Um, I'm, I'm having a whole mind library that I can put this to video. Anyway, you know what I wanted to ask you about, because we're coming up on two hours here and uh, mm -hmm. I would love to just chat away for, for five or six hours, but I don't have that much time tonight. What I did want to touch base with you on is what your plans are for the future. Um, what I think uh, I, I didn't really, we get, we didn't really have that much chance to get into like what, um, hold on a second. I'm getting a, your internet connection is unstable. Can you guys hear me? 
If you guys can hear me, give me a thumbs up if you guys can hear me. Okay, good, good. Okay, anyways, um, I want to hear what your, uh, like if you um, have a, like an organization you're trying to create, I know that you're trying to raise some money for some things. Can you tell us a little bit about that? So, um, so uh, just kind of give us an idea of what your plans are and, and where you want to go with your intactivism. One of the, one of the major things I think that, that uh, I want NLI or next level intactivism to be about is, um, is about encouraging other intactivists to reach their full potential. You know what I'm saying? Like to reach for the stars with their goals and to think about it, how can we do this intelligently, efficiently, and effectively? Efficient and effective are my two favorite words because if you can do something efficiently and effective, that's all you need, right? Like those are the two things. If you have a goal and you can do it efficiently, effectively, that's all you really need. So we got to be intelligent. We got to be smart. We got to plan. And I know you have some ideas and plans for your future. Can you just kind of tell us a little bit about that? Maybe what I'll do is we'll have a link. I can even put you on my website. Like if you have like a, um, uh, you know, whatever you're doing, I can, we can keep in touch and we really want to support whatever uh, intactivism you're doing over there. Uh, go ahead. Go ahead, Jay. Tell us a little about your so, any future plans uh, you have. You know, I'm someone who loves, uh, you know, looking at the problem and uh, I, have, I have a thousand and thousands of ideas. You know, I'm always just like that. I have a lot of ideas. So when I sat down and thought about uh but uh, I thought, of, first of all, I, I discovered my people, they love, they love reading, you know. And when you love reading, the bad part of it is uh, you will take any information at some, at some point, you know. You just take whatever you're reading. There's a way, you know, if you read a storybook, there's a way it affects you. So I told myself, you know, if these people love reading so much, uh, the government is not giving them that. Why don't I bridge in and fill in that gap, you know? We don't have a library. We have schools where I come from. We have we have we have secondary schools, we have whatever, but we don't have a library. There is no computer school, like the school, there's no computer, there's nothing. So I told myself, uh, what about if uh, I build we I come up with an idea, we get funds, then we build uh, any, anyone who is interested comes up and builds up a library and a computer room, you know, so that these people it can be a meeting point. You see, people people love the internet. That one I'll tell you for free. They love it, but they don't see, they don't get it. You see, from that, the way I've told about the government and the thing. So if if, uh, if, there, if there's internet, if there's a, it's a computer where they say, you know, uh, we are going to Jay, Jay's place for this, you find a meeting point for them because it's very important to get them together. At least the government won't say that they are coming to, you know, you know, the government, they have their own ideas when people meet. But when they say they are going to the library, it creates a, a, a good image. But you're using that to pass a message. You see, passing the message is the most important thing. And we have to use all the available means. So that's how I came to an idea. You know, back at home, I told you I'm the only boy. So I have access to my land and all that. Because in my culture, land is given to, to, to boys, firstborns, you, you're the property owner and all that. So I told myself, and my mother is also getting old, you know. So I told myself, now this land that we have here is not helping me because agriculture is just useless. Because in Kenya, if you do agriculture, most people just left agriculture. People are now into real estate. They're sending their lands because agriculture is not working anymore. You know, the government loves exporting things from other countries. They don't want to support local things. So we find that people used to do agriculture blend. So yeah, I have a lot of foreign land. You know. I have a lot of it back in the village. So I told myself, what if I take one of these lands? Because it's ours, it's mine. You know, at least that one will have a value, a face value. You see, we look for face value first. It's mine under my name. I build a, a library struck a computer, you know, it's a project that is very beautiful. Like I've thought about it several times because that's the best thing I can do. You know, a lot of people come in Africa, they give people nets, you know, you know, that is something you use and forget about. This is something that will stand for centuries, you know, and you give it a name that correlates with the circumcision thing. you find a beautiful name that correlates with it, you know. Well, so, I mean, I, 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 um, that experience I had that I was telling you about earlier with the, um, with the, uh, it, she was actually a person that worked at my job and, uh, she, uh, her husband, her, uh, I guess boyfriend at the time was, uh, was just a super rich loaded dude. Right. And so she wanted to take a lot of this money that he just had and wasn't using and give it to, to somebody that, you know, did, did something. So anyways, um, this gentleman that she met, 
uh, that, uh, you know, he created this, they created, and they have created this whole schoolhouse. It's, it's very similar to what you're talking about. Um, so you could literally write out a business plan, you know, uh, and I'm sure you probably know more about this than I do. And I don't know how it would work in your culture, but write out a business plan and then come up with the nonprofit or something or create a system that you can get donations and then, you know, utilize that to finance, you know, some things that you could do to, uh, to make this a, pr a process. I don't, I mean, that's just a thought, you know, that you could do, you know, um, and we would definitely support you in any, any things that you do. I think that, cause, um, I think it's important that we share these types of things and that we help each other. Yeah, go ahead. I'm also a part of that. Then you know, uh, you know the problem that the huge problem that we have here is uh, uh, we have these Nigerians, you know, Nigeria and scamming and all that. So you find that uh, if something, because you know, if you start up something like uh, most, most actually most donations are most successful when whites do it from your country, then they come back to Africa and uh, put that money to the projects they do. So you find that most Africans, when they think of such a uh, type of an, of an event, it will, it will never be successful because uh, most people have an idea that this money will not work the way it's supposed to work. Most people will trust you more than they trust us if we start this, despite the fact that you have a clear goal and want it to happen like that, you see. That's why I was thinking that uh, maybe if it's a project, maybe someone who is interested from that side could come up with an organization that could actually come and put it here into work. Because uh, I tried some time back and uh, it's, 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 it is very impossible for people to trust us because of the past experience. You know, there are a lot of people have given their donations to Africa and nothing is being done. We still have no water, no, like the same, same problems over a century, you see. So it's, uh, it's, it's more working, it's more workable if uh, we have people who can share this same dream with me, uh, they be part of it, because I don't want to run it, you cannot run it. You know, there are people, the people have, a, for example, you find maybe you're good in websites, maybe you're good in this, you know, you can create things that can look more appealing as compared to me, because if I'm trying to create such a thing, it will just look more shady, you know. You know, you, you wouldn't have a prospect. You may have the ideas, yes, but there are people who look at one thing like this and they just see. When they, they see, they just look at it and they say, no, you know, you get it. So uh, all I wanted was if we could get a team, maybe that's the, whole, the, the most part, the most helping part that I really needed. Like if you could get a team that is very, that is very concerned about this, uh, who wants the information to reach more people, who wants other people, you know, people to who have passed through the same thing. You know, it's, it, it, the more people we reach, the better the information. And, I know you have a lot of books, you have a lot of internet. You pass the information to the internet. And the people who come to, you know, to the library to read, to surf the internet, they get the information there. It becomes an information dissemination center, you see, which is very good. Uh, then another well, thing. Well, I want to say this is that one of the things I've noticed, and uh, it's unfortunate, like, I mean, all the volunteers that I get that continue to come back and watch these videos or, you know, whatever, or, or join us and do all this stuff, they're the they're the few, the proud, and the uh, the dedicated. There's not a for some reason it just it's just very hard to get people. But I've noticed if you want something done, you got to do it yourself. You know what I'm saying? Like everything that I'm doing from the database collection to the I mean I'm doing it regardless of whether or not somebody else is helping me. Like I started NLI basically because I wanted to do. Um, I wanted to, um, well, first off, I, I, I noticed a lot of problems with intactivism. There's not a lot of organization. So there's not a lot of um, between organization communication. I know there is in some areas and some groups, and I'm sure that's improving constantly is, is improving, but there was no clear direction. There was no organizing group that, you know, um, that really was doing efficient and effective outreach pro projects. You know what I'm saying? I'm not saying that there aren't groups that are doing outreach and activism projects and there's so many of them that are doing it. But what I'm saying is they're not out there gathering data. They're not out there um, creating databases. They're not out there doing the hard work, right? It's easy to, to, to grab a flag and, and, and walk down the street. You know, that's, I, and it feels good. You get immediate gratification. You get immediate feedback. The hard work is when you have to do something and it's just grinding, right? And you have to do it the next day and then you have to do it the next day because you have to get the stuff. 
But what all I'm saying is, is what I'm, what my advice to you is, is there's um, my, the volunteers I have are so strained. Like for us to put to another piece on our puzzle is, is we are tapped out in all directions as far as uh, NLI and my, but what, what I, I don't, I don't want it to sound like that. Well, there's so much room for growth. Like for instance, that's why I wanted to have these conversations with you, Jay, is because every part of our, every piece of us, every one of us is a piece of the whole puzzle. You know what I'm trying to say? And what I would say is the things that you're trying to do in Kenya, if you want them done, you're going to literally have to do it yourself. There's, there's definitely, you're some support you can get from over here, you know, and I get what you're saying. Like, I understand that Cole, like, I, I understand how smart you are. And I know that you get that, that what you're saying about the white, the white influence, how it, how it has more sway in your culture. I understand that you realize how stupid that is. Like you realize how ignorant that is. You realize that you're just as smart as anybody else on this planet, you know, uh, whatever, you know what I mean? It, it, that, that whole idea that, I don't know that, that somehow because your pigment is certain color <laughs> lightness that you're somehow better than other people or your, your word has more value is, is just, it's like I said, it all goes back to cultural, the, um, the cultural things. And so I get why you're saying about that and, and the struggle that you're dealing with that. We could definitely find a way to benefit you in, in any sort of way that I po personally possibly can or any volunteers that we had, any way that's listening tonight that says, hey, um, like I want to take something like this over. What I could do is put you in touch with an intactivist here in the state. So maybe you could have some sort of contact here. Um, could it be me personally? I could help in a limited perspective, but I am so swamped with all the stuff that I'm doing here that I literally – I do this almost 24 seven and I have this business I'm supposed to be starting and I'm not even doing that. So I just do this all the time and I don't really have that much, but I can add, I mean, but I, I mean, we can still work together. But what I'm saying is if you really want something like that done, you're going to really have to build it yourself. And what you could do is like, I can help with all sorts of ways. For instance, I mean, I, I have my limited business experience, but like, for instance, building a website, how could you do that for free? I can help you with that. I can help you with creating a system like Mautic, um, which is a background so you could send emails and stuff. I could help you with a lot of stuff, you know, helping you with building a list. Because the thing is, anywhere, no matter where you're at, if you have email, you have a contact with that person, right? If you can start sending emails to this person, you, so if you start developing a list of people in Kenya or even do protests or, you know, like you said, uh, we, if we could find a way to build a – would you need to build a building? Because you're talking about – a, a library, right? So you would need like a building, you would need computers, you would need uh, internet access. So we're talking about a pretty substantial financial thing to, to get something like that off the, off the ground. There's a lot of background that has to be built and being a smart man as you are, I totally could see you doing something like that and being successful with it. You know what I'm saying? Um, and if there's anybody that's listening to this, that, um, that, that here is this afterwards. Here's what I've told people because there's so many aspects in intactivism that we need to focus on. For instance, there's the religious aspect, right? So we could have people going to religious, uh, um, you know, teachers and, 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 uh, priests and stuff in America because Christians should not be cutting, right? It, cutting is against Christianity. So we have a very strong argument there. Uh, also university professors, sociology professors, anthropology professors, uh, social, uh, you know, uh, linguistical anthrop uh, anthropology professors. All these professors are just low hanging fruit. We have all these professors and they, they claim to be these people, these accolades of information, these, these, you know, these people that have this, uh, you know, this uh, authority that we should trust. And if we grab this, a lot of this, all I'm saying is somebody could grab that system and create it. Somebody could do that with you. <clears throat> somebody could say, Hey, you know, what Jay says is, is really, powerful it's really important um you know he has uh if he if he wants to work on this and create a background to this and create a, a business plan and write it all out like start putting in writing all these ideas that you have um you know we can talk about these things we can brainstorm we could you know because we really want to be efficient and effective as possible right so we have limited resources we have limited numbers of volunteers um but like i said um 
if we could find volunteers that could help you, that could vastly improve. And we could have that, you know, um, you could have somebody that says, you know, hey, this is this white person that, you know, uh, we, I mean, we could do, we could do um, internet talks like this. We could do Zoom conversations together. You know, if you build an email list in Kenya, you could have a whole, you could start bringing them to these meetups. I mean, I know there's not going to be a lot of people at this early a time that's going to join us, but you know what I'm saying? There's all kinds of ideas that we could just come up with and, and make work. But um, what I would say is if you want something done, you got to do it yourself. So all these plans and ideas that you have, write them down, put them together in a system, you know, talk to Brandon Murata. Brandon like does business coaching. Brandon's tied into like all sorts of things that I think would help you out and be beneficial to you. Um, uh, Brandon, he, uh, Jay did a talk with Brandon Murata recently. I don't know if I told you guys that, but uh, I, t I mentioned it earlier. We're going to have that in the description after at the end of this video. Um, we'll have that in the description below. Also, did you have a link to a donations tab that you were taking? Did, did you have a donations? Uh, now that's the major challenge. That's why I was saying that we need uh, help from the other side because uh, the, the, the genuine donation sites like GoFundMe don't work in Africa. And most people don't want to click on links they don't know. Like they, they trust to go part of it so much. And when it comes to Africa, you cannot join it. So that's where the, the part would come in when some, actually I talked to Scott, I think it's called Scott, yes. I told him to help me create a GoFundMe so that I can put it in a website because I wanted to have like the, this web, website for free, the, the blog the blog, the blog, blog one for Google that gives that for free. I would open a Google website, yeah. uh, the blog post, uh, you know, then write everything there, put everything there. Uh, well, here, here, here's, what, here's what I see that, that could really benefit you. And just, just from my perspective, you know, um, um, I think that the, the library idea is fantastic, but it's going to cost a lot. I see something like that happening in the future, but not right away. What can we do right away? And something that you could do right away is an event. Okay, so, <clears throat> and I, I don't know how uh, your culture works, but uh, just some ideas. So it might not work, um, you know, but it may, it may work. So it's worth it to at least, you know, bounce ideas off each other is like creating an event that may be tied into something that your culture does auto automatically, like some event, some, uh, maybe you do a festival. Okay. And at that festival, you guys all get together, you dance, you do, uh, the, whatever things that you need and you do that together. Maybe at that time you could create a booth and what we could do is we could, uh, and this is what I can see we can finance you. Like an, as uh, there's a term in the in, uh, in business called bootstrap. And uh, I read a book on bootstrapping. And bootstrapping is basically picking yourself up by your bootstraps and financing your own business, right? And so how do you do that? So how do you, how do you bootstrap something like this? Well, you need a projector, a projector screen, uh, and a computer, right? You need a website, okay? You need... Uh, and maybe some chairs, maybe a booth, uh, maybe a table to project your uh, screen onto, and maybe something to hold your projection onto. And what you do is you have some videos and discussions in your language that we videotape ahead of time. And then you run the videotape discussions along the, the whole thing. And then maybe you get on a microphone and you talk and you communicate with people. That's just some thoughts, some ideas. I don't know if that would work. Uh, I don't know if that would work in your situation, but... Um, You see something like that. Um, um, see, here, here's here's what I was thinking with that. Um, you said you have land. Is there a building on the land that you could use for the library, or would you have to build a building? Uh, on the land. Uh, yeah, yeah. Okay, I have my, my I have my grandmother's house, but uh, it's almost falling down because you know it was built in 19, 1965 there around that. Okay. Time. So it has overstayed. Uh, I, it is still standing, though it will need renovations. So I was also thinking that, what about if we start with, you know, people also love growth. Uh, you start with that. Start with uh, what? They see it growing, the, the one, the building that is almost falling. And uh, yeah. in the future, they see it growing. They'll be like, okay, this is a serious thing. We started from this and now see how it has evolved, you know. Because also, if you start immediately, people will be suspicious. They'll be like, oh, okay. You know, so that is also... So you, 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 could, you couldn't just be all out and do a public talk in front of your tribe. That would be dangerous for you. 
Oh, okay, my, my tribe that, that is not like uh, very dangerous because these are people who don't support it. You see, uh, the, the dangerous part is now you see the police, yes. the, the, the chief. Because the, 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 my, my thing would be preventing it from happening in your tribe, you know what I mean? Preventing it from happening to the younger of your tribe that would be the most important thing because you're already intact. And you know, let's instead of like if there's new fires starting out, you know, this let's stamp out those new fires before they, they blow up, you know what I'm saying. That, that's just some uh, thoughts. Okay. With, with uh, you know, in my study of communication, uh, it's uh, one, it's always very easy with how to have casual talk. Actually, the best types of communication that never raises uh, eyebrows is when uh, you do casual talk. Whereby you come to the village, of course, when I come from the town, you know, okay, this guy has come from the town, he has brought us some good things, you know, it's always like that with this. Person. So when people come, you know, to see you, to greet you, you know, they are. They're, their son, you know, has come back from the village. Of course, you'll get people who come to want to talk to you. Some will want you to give them jobs and all that. So that is my approach, actually, when I go to the village. That has always been my approach. Uh, you sit there, you're having a cup of tea, maybe you're roasting something or maybe a goat or something. Then you have a casual talk, you see. It's, it's better uh, than organizing, you know, telling somebody, go call for me 50 boys, you know. Uh, it sounds yeah. like a revolution to them. It will sound like, okay. Maybe there's money. You see, if you, if you, you see the problem in Africa, uh, we, are, we, are, we are used to this handout, you know, handout politics. Even during campaign, politicians will come give you sugar, you see. So, so the, you know, blankets, even the white people, the white that uh, come and talk about any idea in Africa, they must come, they must buy blankets, you know, nets. So here is a, here is a place whereby you're fighting people who have money, you know. You're trying to pass the information empty-handed, as compared to these other people who come with, you know, uh, someone has given them a blanket, nets because you have mosquitoes here, uh, salt, sugar. You see, that they, they will take uh, the other person more serious, you see, if you try to organize them into such type of, because there's no way you'll call them, you sit with them there, you see some of them have left, take, most of them maybe they are going to, rest, to take their cattles to drink, or some are going to the garden, then they come, you know, they leave their work to come and listen to your information, then they go, Back without anything. You see, insensitive, that's why you find that uh, circumcision campaign was successful because of these lies, you know, these incentives, you know, the sugar, the salt. They might they might look very small to other people, but to my country or to my village, salt is very important. Sugar to them, you know, people who take porridge without sugar, if you give them sugar, they will feel okay, you know, it has a lasting impact to them. Of course. According to them. And, and so, especially to the child who wants to give so, his parents that. So the child, the child feels like he has to do it for the parents, for so that the parents yeah. can have access. Because the, the parents are overwhelmed and trying to provide and trying to do their best they can, and then they put the pressure on the child to accept it because it'll give his parents some, some less, uh, you know, make it a, a little bit easier on the parents. It's just it's so it's man it's it's just it's devious. It's very devious. Exactly. Can I can I show you the? Um, well, this is kind of like um, <clears throat> I just want to see. I want to show you some images on my screen and and if you think that these um because I, I these images right here are um images of protests that are occurring in in africa and i i, I think that this would be um you can see this is uh, i'm not sure exactly where this is happening but um this is a this i think would be very very because if, if you if you were able jay if, if you wanted to get some 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 support for you know, uh, uh, you know, to do a donations or any from donations over here, um, you're going to want to show the people that's giving you the donation some of these, some images like this, you know what I mean? So they can see, hey, this is what he's doing. You know what I'm saying? So, I mean, it's, I, I see what you're saying. I, you know, having conversations and stuff is very, you know, it's going to be a lot more, um, it, it's going to be important that those conversations happen uh, no, regardless. But to get something like this is going to help you to get more people involved with what you're doing. You see what I'm saying? So if you had images, if you had, uh, um, if you had, for instance, um, sh it, it, uh, let me sh take these out here. Um, even just, you know, check these out right here. These are fantastic, right? These are men talking right here. <clears throat> if you were to, um, to say, look, at, we got this event started and, you know, we need to have, you know, projectors, we need to have computer screens, we need to have, this could give you a start, right? Where you could then grow into something bigger. 
You know what I'm saying? But you, if you had something like this where you could show that you had a lot of people involved, this would help you to get donations. And, and being that your tribe is already, already against this, you know what I'm saying? Like use condoms to prevent HIV and what and pregnancy. Why are circumcised men die of AIDS? So people are experiencing those circumcised men dying of AIDS. Resist the male lies of circumcision. So this is very powerful. So and, um, and, and when you show this in America, the uh, people that would give you donations, you know, they would see this and be like, you know what? Wow, I would definitely give to something like this. You know what I'm saying? This can give you a lot of power with donation wise in America. Um because it shows you, you know, so you look at this, uh, this is fantastic. You know, if you, if you could show, look at, look at how many people are involved in this. This is a lot of, a lot, a lot of people and, and something like this, you could really get some people to support that. You know what I'm saying? And, um, you know, just, uh, you know, having a talk like this where you sit down with the leaders, um, real quick, I just want to mention something that, uh, a lot of, and we got to get going. I know it's, it's way too late. I'm talking everybody's ear off. I, I don't want to have two and a half hour conversations, but it's every, you know, when we have Jay on, you know, and we have so, something to talk about, so important. It's, it's such a valuable conversation. And I know we can still, there's so many aspects and avenues of this that I really want to explore in the future that we can continue uh, to explore. But um, I just want to mention this is, is it like, um, the thing that, that, that I noticed that was the failure of the FGM campaign. And when you talk about general psychology of behaviors that all humans share, and then you have cultural influence, right? The nature versus nurture, how much of your behaviors are related to your culture versus how much are your behaviors related to you being a human, right? So we all share similar cultural traits. One example is no man wants to admit their penis is damaged, right? No man wants to admit that. Who wants to admit that? So nobody from across the culture. That's why you can guarantee that whatever, cult, whatever circumcision happens, starts happening in a culture, it's like a fire. And as that fire starts to grow, it engulfs. It doesn't, it doesn't shrink like you think it would. You would think that this horrible, the horrible bad thing is going to shrink. But no, we walk around with clothes on. We're covered and we hide it. We hide it from our children. We don't even talk about it. It's a taboo to even mention it in our culture where, um, my family even is so disgusted with me. They can't even hear me talk about saving children, which is I, what did you tell me all my lives that you are the ones that cared about children, that you put children ab above your egos, above your own selves. You're, and now you can't even listen to me talk about it because of my manner of my, of, anyways, it, that's just my family. But it just goes to show you that nobody wants to admit this. My uncles, my nobody wants to say, Hey, I have a 25% sensation penis nobody wants to admit that so across cultures so anyways what these fgm uh, campaigns failed to realize is they they were basically and this is I, I wrote about this a little bit in some of the uh, writings recently some of my blog the uh fgm campaigns failed to realize is that they used to think that when, when they started these campaigns they were uh, activists right most of the people that were going over there were activists where they come from they came from american cultural background right so they came from american activist class slash you know uh these outliers who go and they protest with big signs in the 60s and 70s it changed american culture from this traditional conservative culture to this more you know, a, a aware culture of we paid more attention to the youth. We started listening to them, right? We realized that, hey, the youth can stop a war literally. And they did, right? They got us out of Vietnam earlier than we would have otherwise, right? So the youth literally stopped the war. So we thought, hey, let's send these activists, youth activists over to Africa, and they're going to be able to stop FGM in Africa, you know, because it's so horrific. It's so horrible. The, the females there for sure want this to be ended, right? They're, they want us to save them. The females are going to be, we're oppressed, we're saving the oppressors, you know, kind of like we thought, you know, was going to happen in Iraq, I guess, uh, or other places that we take over, where, where we tell the population we think is going to happen. But anyways, um, so what they realize is that these activist people have very, very little influence in the actual culture itself. Why? Because first off, the women don't see this as some horrible thing. They believe it's the best thing that ever happened to them. They think it's the invention of sliced bread or the wheel, just like the men think it. Just like the men don't want to admit their genitals are harmed. Guess what? It's the same for females. Wow, shocking. Is that not shocking to the average person? It shouldn't be. It shouldn't be shocking. It should be obvious. So yes, um, the females also 
believe just like the men of our culture that this is a wonderful thing that happened to them so when we had this wild intactivist or you know our female activists over there and we would go to their cultures and we would gather those youth activist class that wanted to raise the thing everybody in their cultures kind of laughed at them first off the women thought this was great the culture realized that uh that you know this cutting is you know no different than what they're doing to the guys so how does that make sense there's a lot of hypocrisy in the, in the in the movement itself. They realize this stuff, so it had very little influence, right? We have had very little influence on chasing the FGM culture. The, the truth is, is because we haven't been honest with ourselves about our own cutting, and secondarily, because we've been focused on the wrong people. The people who influence those cultures, when you look at conservative cultures, are the the, the tribal leaders, the people that make the ch the change that that talk the ones that the, everybody in the tribe looks up to. And I'm not talking about all tribes. I know that there's a div my, wide diversity. And this is why I asked Jay, I said, I don't know if this will work in your culture, but can it? And this could be dangerous for him. I don't know. I don't know. And this is why I asked, um, this could be dangerous for him to do this. And that's why it's important to find out if it is. I don't want anybody doing anything dangerous. Okay. I, I, no. I, I realize that there's some danger, there's some danger inherent in us doing this in America. You know, me being on a street corner in America, I could have somebody just, uh, you know, uh, uh, you know, this is a trauma and I can literally have somebody attack me or assault me in America for this. So I, I know that in cultures that are more conservative, you have to be very careful. So anyways, um, if we had an outreach, another way, Jay, that you could uh, that you could approach this is rather than going out and having parades is you could have meetings with tribal leaders and you could videotape those meetings. You could say, look, I need a video camera. Uh, I'm going to take these video cameras out and I'm going to have these these meetings where I'm going to have an intellectual science based discussion with the leaders of my community and the older tribesmen, the people that agree with you. And you can get funding for, you know, a video camera and some computer stuff and get yourself started and maybe gr morph and grow into something that's more extensive in the future. That's all I'm saying. What do you think about that? Um, any thoughts on that? Jay, and then I'm I'm gonna let you cover it for like five more minutes, and then we got to get going, and then we're gonna cover it. Yeah, we're gonna end uh, it. Uh, it's a good idea, and actually, uh, you know, I told you I have a hundred and hundred ideas. So my main my main thing is uh, like I'd wanted uh, to get that uh, the media attention because you see things are changing. You know, in the past. People could take, uh, you know. The, Jay, the Jay I, I, I'm no, I know I'm not supposed to, I'm the worst interviewer ever because I keep stomping on your toes and I'm so, I apologize. But what you just said is very fascinating to me because we have a whole media outreach system set up. And what you're talking about, outreaching to the media, we could help you with that. I have a whole system. I could teach it to you. You could take this and you could run with it, bro. You could take this and you could get you could get all the media contacts in your country. We could send it. We could put it as part of our system. You don't have to send it from yourself. You know, j I mean, just just the, the possibilities with us are fascinating. So especially gathering media. I'm sorry, and I'll shut up. And I'll shut up. Sorry. Go ahead. Uh, so uh, see me. There's a, there's a way. Okay. There's a, a new approach that uh, I took with this campaign. Like uh, I didn't want to have the approach of the old systems where, by, you know, the, the, the ones you've said, like uh, you people go, you interview the locals, you see that they, they won't give you an honest opinion because uh, for them, they are talking to you because they need something, you see. So you find, that's why you find most uh, organizations are not successful because the people there are just giving them an outer outlook of things because of the things they're getting back, you see. So I came up with a new approach to this campaign uh, through social media, first of all, to have an open discussion to make this become a, a topic. And this is very important to me because right now, when there is a post about circumcision, people from Kenya, they tag me, they actually tag me, you see. So I'm feeling good because I'm getting that uh, attention and then the, the, the circumcision is becoming a topic in, in, in my country, which people, people used to just look at it like that. And now hey, I decided to do you have a video camera that you could use? Uh, uh, really? No, I haven't. Uh, okay, okay. Really because because all the stuff that you're telling me right now is that okay, you have these great ideas, but you don't have a way to action to make the turn them into action. Well, no, I'm sorry. I take that back. You're yeah. doing it on social media. 
So you already I'm are active. Yeah, yeah, you're doing on social media. What I what I mean is you have, um, if you had a video camera and you could start recording you talking to having these conversations with the people in your culture. Yeah, I mean, exactly. Like uh, I could say, record my because one one thing is uh, I have a, actually I have a very huge presence on social media because when I when I make a post I get like 300 likes. You see, there's a time I made a video about circumcision, and the video had uh, like around 5,000 views on Facebook and uh, in, and uh, interactions from the people from from the Kenyan people you see like right now people are so much into the internet and it is good to talk to them through that other than using the older methods whereby you know you have to go you know when you take such pictures let, let me tell let me give you the, the idea uh, Hola, go, Kenya, go back uh, when you take uh, when you go to a village when you Take a picture, for example, I go to a village, right? I'll find people there, they're living this life, you know, this poverty life. I'll take a picture of them, you see. You know that uh, my followers will be like, I'm taking advantage of them, you see. Now that's the idea they have. Actually, that's the idea they have. They'll be like, why do you go to Africa and take pictures of the body images? Why don't you go to a town and take a picture? You see, now that is the, the, the approach. That's why you find most campaigns on Africa fail because people target the poor places, mostly. What I would say, Jay, what I would what I would say, Jay, is 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 um, like I would be very interested in uh, in you doing. You're 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 a very intelligent speaker. Um, you're very educated on this, and, and and maybe we could fill in any gaps that you, you may not have. I don't know how much you know about the anatomy and all that stuff, but we can fill out any gaps that you may have. And I don't, I, I just don't know. Um, and, but what I see is that we need to give you something that you could use, some sort of resources that you could use. Yeah. And um, what I would say, and just right off the bat, what seems obvious to me, I mean, as far as um, getting the, the you know, to build a library, that's, that's amazing, but that's a long-term goal, right? That's not something that's going to happen next week. You know, that's yeah. going to be a big, that's going to be a big thing. But what can you do next week? What if, what if, if you had access to a video camera, do you know people in your community that that you could talk to that you can have discussions with they don't have to be now listen to me they don't have to be pro mutilation they don't have to be uh i'm sorry they don't have to be intactivist they could be for it or against it they could be either way the point is is to get them record them we can make sure that goes on to youtube we could we yeah. could even invite them on the show here and have them talk with us um there's ways to integrate this to get it off the ground and what I would say is if we could get you a video camera, you know, if, if we could say, hey, let's do a GoFundMe, get Jay a video camera, maybe a computer set, you know, some basic materials that you need to, to, um, to get started, so to say. And, you know, I don't know what you have, what materials you would need, you know, what you'd be willing to do. I mean, it, it's, we're just brainstorming now and, uh, and all that stuff. But what I'm saying is, is let's come up with a plan for you that's actionable. You know what I mean? That's that's yeah. that's reasonable. That's that's right up front here. That's tangible. That we could just, you know what I'm saying? And, and what I'm saying is, the only really thing that that I would see right now, I think it'd be very hard to start. And I mean, without writing a full business plan, and uh, you know, pictures of the of the place that you're speaking of doing this at, you know, maybe you're going to talk to other type of charities because this is not going to be just about intactivism, but it's also going to be about having a library of other. Uh, so educational, so you, you could tap into a whole other charity aspect of this where you could start going, and this is just thinking, brainstorming, the whole other charity aspect where you could say, hey, this is about education for my tribe. It doesn't have anything to do with circumcision. And then guess what? Your reach pool, your uh, donation pool has just vastly increased, okay? Because, because it, uh, people are very interested in educating people that don't have education, right? That's an important issue for a lot of people all over the world. And you could get a lot of people in America uh, to, to agree with that and say, hey, let's, uh, let's fund some sort of educational library full of books. And then you could start writing, like you could have a list of books that you could have there, you know, maybe books on, um, you know, that relate to the local economy, books that relate to uh, local her herbiculture or farming or, um, you know, different aspects of, you know, mathematics, engineering, 
you know, electricity, all sorts of different things wrapped in this one little package. And then, oh, by the way, we're also going to have some books on circumcision. We're also going to be pro intact. That's we're just not going to make that our main thing. You see what I'm saying? And then you could literally <clears throat> you could literally tap into whole other areas of, of this. And also you could still get support from intactivism for that. You could still get support from intactivism as well. So you should do something it's like we have to figure out ways to make your system successful uh, or your ideas actionable and successful so that, you know, we're not just talking about this five years from now. You know what I'm saying? That that's, things are really happening for you and for all of us. You know what I'm saying? So um, anyways, yeah. uh, I'm going to, I'm going to, um, Let's let's talk about this more. We have to do a 2.0 of this. Now, unfortunately, we've got V Savage next week, and then we're talking to Tina Kimmel. All right, guys. Um, great talk, Jay. Did you have anything that you wanted to say before? I know. Uh, 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 the, the, the idea, actually, what you have said. Uh, actually, I had a very huge announcement today uh, that I wanted to make. Uh, say, say that again? Because... I had a huge announcement. That I'd oh to yeah, make. announcement. Okay, let's let's hear that. So, um, I've decided. Uh, you know me, my main aim. Okay, the reason why I talk about media so much, uh, I did much. I did You're breaking up. You're breaking up. I know up. how information is very important and how to. Yeah, I'm saying the reason I keep talking about the media uh, is because. Are you, are you hearing me now? Yes. Yes. Sorry. Much better. Yes, I'm saying the reason why I love, I love talking about the media uh, is because uh, I did mass communication and uh, I, I understand how how the media works and how to get the attention and what the type of people media tries to look out for, you know, so that your information can be put out there, you know. You know, we have what we call news. What makes news, you know? Does it, does it bring out emotion, you know? So when you come to news and the media, uh, they always look for people they know that can bring out something, you know, the new things that is very important to the general public, you see. So I've decided, I've told you in my country, we're having elections next year, and I want to get as much as media attention so that we talk about this circumcision, not only on Facebook, but through a national media of my country. And the only way I can do this is when I run for an office, you know, uh, it's my constitution right, and I want, I'm not going to run for the smallest part. I'm going for the top. I'm not going to run to win. I want to run for, I'm going to run for president, but I'm not running to win. I'm running to get the attention because during this president, if you stand for president, we have debates, presidential debate. I want to use that huge platform because even CNN shows that they'll be interested in such things. I, I sat down and thought about it critically because I want to run, not to win but I want to run to get the media attention. The most important part here is the media. And actually, when I started this, this, uh, this, uh, this thing, I started it with the idea that the information must reach. I don't care whether these people uh, uh, understand, it, but the most important part here is the stage that we are here in Africa is that people are talking about it. You see, that's the part that I want to put it at, at first. That was my goal. When people are talking about it, now the second phase is, let them now understand it. You see, they always say publicity is good. Whether it is negative or positive, every publicity is good. If you, if you did uh, public relations, you'll understand that some, a publicity can, you see, when, when we have, pro, you have product placement. When you look at a product, people ask, why is it that Coca-Cola keeps advertising it and yet people still buy it? You see, obviously people are going to buy Fanta, people are going to buy soda, but why is it that they always advertise it? It's because they're creating product awareness, you see. When people see something somewhere there, they know Coca-Cola exists. Why? Because you keep seeing it in the media. Now let's say Coca-Cola stops advertising for a year. Do you, do you know that uh, people will stop thinking about it? You know, the, the mind is just like that, you see. So I wanted to take this thing a notch higher by, you know, standing up for an elective post to get that media attention. Because I know, they actually, they'll, they'll come, they look for me. The good thing is, I want to look for them. Because they want, you know, they, they, they want news. They'll look for me. They'll ask me, why are you running for this and that? And when they look for you, you use that chance to bring out what you think. Talk about circumcision, you know. Have your points written, because I have a lot of information in my head. 
during presidential debate. That is a huge, huge platform. A presidential debate is a very huge platform. CNN will show it. You know, other well, major news outlets will show it. What know? do you What do you have to do? What are your steps um, to get to uh, from this point? Have you Have you done any research? Is there um, Is there like uh, a, a uh, application that? process? Is there fees that you have to? Uh, um, let, let me ask you this. Um, I don't want to get into your personal finances, but um, as far as a video camera, getting a video camera, do you have any, um, I, I hate to ask people to do personal things, but like, um, do you need help with getting like a video camera? Would that benefit you to get some, to get some donations for like a video camera? It will really, it will hugely benefit me because at least, uh, I'll, I'll, I'll put myself as a, as a journalist too, and uh, it will really be helpful to, in recording, you know, those long videos that are, that are good. Um, you know? why, don't, why, don't we do, why don't we do this? Is, um, I, I know we got to get going, and I really want to talk to you a lot more about this, but um, it, it's, it's just getting too long, and um, my wife is going to get uh, upset with me if I don't cut it down, but um, she probably already is. So um, anyways... Um, Let's uh, let's get something actionable out of this today. Um, I want to I want to set together uh, James. Hey, uh, are you there, James? Yeah. Would you be interested in um, in helping set up a GoFundMe for Jay to get a, a uh, camera, video camera? I'll see what I can do, and I can once I get that set up, I'll text you. I guess. Okay, would, would Jay? Would that be something that you see as? Um, because what, what I look at is this. Okay, let's let's get let's get some donations. We'll buy you the video camera. We'll ship it to you. That way you have access to be able to videotape. You know, and then what you can do is you can start videotaping, and then you can start putting those on YouTube. We can share them on my channel. You can start your own channel um, and start sharing those, and that can help with your presidential campaign. And then you could use that to talk to people from your pre presidential campaign. Um, you know. Uh, there's all kinds of things that we could uh, do to help you. So I don't know. Yes, uh, yes I'm actually, uh, I, I actually even announced it. I told you I'm so much of a social media person. I announced it and people are talking about it. You see, that's the good thing. Like when I talk about something, people are listening. They're even like, oh, we need a new change. We need a new person. But actually, for me, my, my aim is I'm, I know I'm, 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 I don't want to win. I don't want to do anything. But what I want is a platform. You see, that is what platform. I'm looking for. What happens if you win? win? <laughs> <laughs> if I win the, the, the cannot hunt, you know African politics the way it is. <laughs> <laughs> well then you can African really stop it. Then you can really stop it, right? Uh, but then you have all the power. Is, uh, the, the good thing is having a, a platform. And to have a platform, you dream big. You see. Me, I'm, I dream big. You know, this is something that someone would think that this guy is crazy. Someone even told me, why don't you start with an MPO? Oh, I said, no, that is a small, a small post. It won't it attract a lot. No, I don't think there's any media who even want to come and interview you because you want to be a chief, a local chief or something like that. They won't, you see. But if you want to be, you know, the president, you know. Right. And then I have, to believe, I have a lot of, of comic, you know. I have this oratory, skill, this oratory skill that can help me make me have a the conversation for a week. Like, if I be there on that stage, I know I'll have a lot of comical, you know, laughter and all of that. But at the end of it, I push in my circumcision there, you know, people will, will talk about it for a long time, you know. Yeah. So it's... It, 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 James it's is going to ask you a question. James, you have um, a question for Jay? You, yeah, for Jay. Um, I'm, I'm thinking, can you, uh, via Facebook Messenger, send me what what you want your fundraiser to say and i can turn it in, into a fundraiser okay 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 then I'll, I'll do that then another thing uh you hearing yeah we yeah. can hear you uh here in kenya we have very stupid laws like uh, let's say you talked about uh i heard you talking about the, the shipping uh if you I don't know why it's just a, a means of making life hard for everyone. Like if you ship a car, you might find that maybe cars are cheap in, in, in the US, right? Uh, you buy a car, maybe let's say $5,000. You ship it to Kenya. You pay double the price. Oh, yeah. Like you pay, there's that shipping, I don't know how they call it. 
you might have cleared on your side. Because there's a time I really wanted some phone, because you know here I had a very crazy phone. That's all. I saw phones were actually somehow cheaper in your country, because you find uh, an iPhone 6 here in Kenya is still costing the same price as iPhone 11 there in your country. Mm. So I thought that iPhone 6 is now very cheap. Why can't I get it from that country because of the storage and all that, you know? So I said, let me try and look for the shipping. When the price was around uh, the, the refurbished, someone was selling it around uh, is it $120, something like that. But when I narrowed down the shipping cost and everything that I was to pay, it was again just doubling into this. You know, there are these policies. I don't know whether it's just a cut in Africa or I don't know. Like, you just cannot do something and make it look perfect. You know, they find oh, they have to find ways of making it. That would be so frustrating. So I was thinking, I was thinking, okay, we have good, there are good cameras here, like uh, for video, for videography, you know, we, we have Canon, we have, their companies are in Africa here. Uh, the, the most one that people go for, we have the Canon cameras here, you know, with their different perspectives. We well, we could people. even, we could even, we could even buy you one locally, you know, that for you there. So Yeah, yeah, that was what I was thinking, like if I could get yeah. it locally, because if you put about shipping, it will be there for, for a long time. It will reach some even will steal it. Like you, you ship it, they'll steal it has not arrived. Yet it does. It has the problem with that one. <laughs> yeah, yeah so it's, not, it's not really reliable. Yeah, that makes so sense. Not, uh, yeah, well let's let's talk about that. Let's maybe we can find out a way that we could uh, we could pay for it locally so we don't have to do that. Hey, um I've got a I've got did you have anything else that you wanted to wrap it up? Because I I've got to get going and... uh, 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 the, the, the last thing uh, I'd wanted to add is uh we, we are now in a, in, a, in, a, in a form of information, right? But you see me allow information. So uh, when you want information to reach more people, we have this, uh, you know, Upwork. Uh, Upwork is a, is a place where, they, you know, Upwork? Airport? Uh, there's a company, yeah, where people, uh, there are people who upload work they're writing. I'm sorry. It's, a, it's, an, it's from the US, actually. Upwork, they used to call it Desk in the past. Uh, I, I have bad Upwork. hearing. I'm Airport, you're saying? Airport? Upwork, 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 where people post uh, jobs. Oh, writing um, gigs. oh, okay. What's it called again? Upwork, Upwork. Upward. Upwork, work, up, then work. Oh, okay. Upwork, okay, okay. Gotcha. It's, 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 a, it's, a, it's a writing, okay, it's, it sounds like, uh, you know, I write, if you've done writing, you know those companies that uh, hire people to write. So yeah, yeah. If you want information to reach more people, also uh, you, from your side, you can also use such sites whereby you post a job. Okay, they gotcha. pay them. You can even post it for two dollars, just like Fever. You know Fever. Yeah, Fiverr. So yeah, yeah so yeah. that gigs exactly. So if you post a job, ten million people are going to read that job, and let that job be connected to the conversation. You know. Yeah, that's a smart idea. It could be two dollars, four dollars. So when you post such a job, uh, a lot of people are going to read through it. Who wants to apply for it? You see, yeah, but yeah. It can run even. For, that is free advertisement for you, actually. <laughs> <laughs> I love, I love guerrilla advertisement. That's that's <laughs> slick, man. That's that's a slick one. I like that. <laughs> yeah, that's pretty slick. Hey, uh, thank you, Jay, for joining us tonight. Uh, thank you, James. Who else is on here? I know somebody else. I'm going to go ahead and. Shut it off. Uh, who stayed with us this whole time? Scott, you're here still. Scott, I'm surprised. Uh, we haven't heard from you all, all night. You did mention something earlier. Uh, well, you, you, usually you're, you're more vocal, but I appreciate you being here as well. well did you have anything you wanted talking. to say before, um, before we oh. shut it down? Go ahead, oh, Scott. I mean, yeah, I mean, I didn't talk because Jay, Jay was talking, so I just stayed quiet for. Yeah, we wanted. I definitely wanted to get him a spot. Everyone, you did. know, because um, yeah, last time, the podium. last time we were, uh, we ended up getting shut down. Uh, we ended up having a bad, um, uh, unfortunately, a bad audio recording. And and uh, his his talk last time was fantastic. His talk for today was fantastic. So, yeah, we wanted to let uh, Jay run, take the microphone and run with it. But yeah, go ahead, Scott. Do you have anything you wanted to add before we? Shut it all down, and you too, James. If you wanted to have one last thing to say, um, the the uh, the problem I have is first of all we're undermanned, and um, I'm trying to you know, reach out to other people and that I know who and um, get them in this, but I mean we, they won't join, and 
I don't know if they don't care anymore or if they think we're posting on Facebook and every once in a while is good enough or what. Well, um, a lot of people, a lot of people, they just, they need to see the results of this. And I mean, I think when we start having our, our recorded tele and phone call conversations with high quality people that have read seven or eight emails and like already get it, that yeah, um, yeah. those recordings, <laughs> those recordings would be fantastic. And uh, e even even if nobody else joins us, and this is this is uh, one of my feelings on this is even if nobody else joins us from this point on, the people we got right now are fantastic. You know, um, we got uh, you know you guys have helped me to do a lot of things that for a very small group of people we're reaching a large group of people, and and so because of that, uh, you know, we're having we're going to have some influence no matter what. Even if we suck, if, if we do the worst that we possibly can, but we still do what we're doing, we're going to have a massive influence on saving babies. Uh, and whether or not we can change the culture itself, I think, you know, I think we can. Like, I, <clears throat> I think that there's like some sort of point in time when it's kind of like a, the kettle, you know, like the flashpoint is going to be reached or, you know, the tipping point, like uh, Intact America likes to say, is going to be reached. Um, and then people are going to just start to get it. But, uh, like even if yeah. even if it's just us, you know what I'm saying? Like yeah. it's still gonna be well, good. But yeah, I, th I think yeah. Um, which yeah, what you're saying is 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 uh, as people start to see the benefit of it, I think they'll start to join us. So go ahead, Scott. Sorry. Um, I also think that the the films. <gasps> and I I still uh, I believe that a film about the movement, um, meaning it'd be historical. It would be when it started, who was doing it, um, the hurdles we had to jump, like in the 2011 in San Francisco, the ACLU, getting it off the bill. I think you mentioned that in this in this. Uh, you talked about meeting. that today. And well, Tina Kimmel yeah, was involved talking. in that. Yes, yes, that, that Tina, would be Tina's going to be, she's going to be talking and, to us in two weeks. I'm excited. She's awesome, by the way. And, and in um, Iceland, when it almost went through and it didn't too, like few years ago, uh, I remember exactly when. Yeah, um, things like that you matter. Mean, you know how many documentaries should be made about this? There could be like fifteen or twenty. Well, okay. Uh, so that's also something I think would be really great if we had a documentary on it, so that people could understand the controversy in it, so they could see that oh, this is a big issue, and there have been people trying to do the right thing. Oh, and this is what stopped it, and then they'll realize they've been lied to for all this time, and I think that really helped turn things around. You know, it really helped. Wait. You know, the one of the cool things is is that we have this access to these technologies where we can record ourselves and we could say these things and then we could share them with large large groups of people. And I think that's uh, you know something that's very valuable. So, you know, that's why uh, I want to get Jay, uh, uh, you know, maybe get him started on doing some recordings and and you know I think that'll be beneficial for his presidential thing. But what, what we could take what all the, we could take all these videos and we can turn them into documentaries. That's all I was gonna say. Go ahead. That would help, but I also mean putting in the um, news reports of it, like actual videos or news or, or any any sources of the MGM bill that the ACLU shut down. We really tried to get it even on the, on the ballot to vote if they wanted it to be law. It didn't even make it to the ballot, but enough people signed a petition to get it on there and show the corruption that held it back. And also in Iceland and also um, – Oh, in courts, courts where Pete Paris tried to press charges, but they would not allow video and the instruments to be presented as evidence. Um, you know what I'm talking about there? Where the, yeah. the, the, the tools for the jobs or constraints and the, the clamps and whatnot, they, they wouldn't permit that. You know, so it's exposing the um, political and corporate and medical corruption. Because it's a it's a money it's a money maker you know what I'm saying it's kind of like yeah. like the um, military industrial complex makes money well this is another thing same kind of concept here you you, you know, would be uh, fantastic at, at it's doing a snake that oil show. kind of thing too it's a snake oil kind of thing isn't it you yeah. know the snake oil salesman isn't this technically like snake oil well it's totally snake oil it's, it's worse but you get it's what complete I'm saying pseudoscience yeah it's it's crazy but no, it's, but, yeah but that's what the snake oil thing is you've got this problem but you drink the snake oil you know and your, your hair will grow in thick because eventually you're gonna lose it kind of cost it it's the same thing it's the snake oil salesman pitch it is yeah and i think that we we would we I, th I think a documentary on that would be fantastic also though i i do think that other anti-medical fraud activists people who protest um the terrible lack standards of drugs and new medical procedures being approved which are very dangerous uh would be on our side yeah that's a really good um, point too
a lot of I, they call it cross yeah. activism. They call it cross and activism. And I'm gonna tell you, I'm gonna tell you, to be fair, if they're gonna help us, I'll help them. You know, I am willing to stand up for what they believe in because I've seen a documentary called The Bleeding Edge, which is on Netflix. It shows that um, the surgery robots and that they work, but you know, operators um, don't have to be that well trained, and they've killed people when operating with them. And other, other like we'll say newer experimental procedures have been done on people that have harmed them. And they have people um, now protesting, such as like I think joint replacements that had some mercury in it and it was breaking down and going in the bloodstream and making people go crazy, you know, mercury poisoning. Um, wow. So it was like that and that and it, it traced it back to the corporations that make these products and the medical boards which are in on the profits, so they easily approve it. So the point is that, you know, when a new drug or procedure is approved, it's not because it did well in experiments and test trials. It's not because, you know, it, 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 it really works well. It's because they can convince people it does and they'll be fine with it. They'll be this, um, it's all about money. confident in it. That's the word, you know, and then they'll they'll do it they'll you know it'll become a standard practice for whatever it's for and they'll make that money and that's corrupt too and this certainly fits into that category it's just been, it's been going on for a long time might be one of the longest oldest things of that kind of medical fraudulent nature and i think those activists would be much on our side and as much as we'll be on theirs because the things that they are protesting are terrible too i mean just are also you you see that documentary and you'll understand what I mean. You will understand well, how things I, are people are being I'll, harmed. Me and you, me and you are on the same. We I, so, I, I was I yeah, started to help that. Yeah, that's yeah, that's as bad. That's that's bad too. And I think that you know they would they would certainly sympathize for us and as I would for them. Right, cross activist um, cross activist cross. Okay, because cross activism is good because you're you're communicating with people that are already active in another cause. Which means they yeah. are they are so they care so enough yeah. about a cause that they're willing to be active about it, and you know we're active and tactivists. That's activated, activated, dedicated, motivated, educated, and tactivists, right? So, uh, so, anyways, the activated part is essential because you know, like, we could sit here and talk all day long, and this is why I I. I, I just harp on people. It's just like, you know, like when we're talking about these things, like you have to have actionable things that you can do, things that are effective and efficient. A plan of action. Yeah, a plan of action. So when you talk about these things and you say this, Scott, like you have to be willing to then go sit there and start putting some pencil down and start writing some outlines and start coming up with video shots that you can contribute. You know, Tina Kimmel, we're going to have on next week. We can be videotaped. I'm going to be interviewing her. Part of that interview could be part of your documentary. I mean, I don't know how the quality, like if you're going to try to do something like Brandon Murata's thing, but the thing is, I don't think you need to have something like that. You, we don't, we what, don't what have, I is, what I'm saying is we don't have the technology. Well, we don't have I, the, need, the, I need some help because, you know, I don't always know exactly how to do what I'm willing to do, but um, I, I can search the internet for people in these groups to contact them. And what I also need is, why don't um, you, why don't you talk to Brandon Murata who's done this and who's, Who's uh, already experiences? I mean, thing, the I thing have is, talked to him a little bit, and he's, he's, he's kind of like, yeah, wants you to. I mean, he he's like, go for it. Um, but he, what I would say with him is, what I would say with him is, talk to him about the quality that you're going to need, like what level yeah. of quality that you're going to need. I, but I I want to have something to present to him too. I don't want to talk to him with nothing. I want to have have um, it in writing. Start writing. Do you have a free have mind? video? I want I want to have actual some results to say, Brendan. Yeah. Um, I would like to make a documentary. Here's the footage. Please help with this. What would make this look professional? And we can't have it drag on for too long because then people get bored. It needs to be direct. That's important. You know, you could kind of go on and on about examples. Yeah, like this stuff, video today. But I, but get, <laughs> when you tell, when you want to tell people things, get to the point. Okay. All right, Scott. Good point. And on that note, <laughs> James, do you have anything to say? Anything you wanted to add? Uh, just a few things. Um, uh, I'll make them quick. Uh, first of all, as far as the whole um, sending emails thing, I did 
I I understand, you know, you want me to help with Arkansas, and I do plan to do that. I just, I have been busy with work, so it's a bit more difficult, but I, but I haven't forgotten about that. And then, second of all, what I wanted to say is that there was someone who posted a bit ago um, about me, and he said, uh, who the fuck is this freak? Why does he care so much about everyone's reproductive organs, and why are so many of you friends with him? He sounds he sounds like a nice person though, doesn't he? <laughs> Their arguments are always so pathetic and so weak. You know, like who cares so much? You don't care about his genitals or nobody else's genitals. What you care about is a child being harmed, right? That's what you care about. Like it has, it's just it just their their arguments are always so weak. You know, and and when you when they are so like that, I mean, if you want to swing in the mud with them, you can sit there and say, oh. Well, you know, uh, you're the one that's cutting them, da 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 You know, you could see there's so many things that will blow that out of the water, you know. So it's – but it is – it is – it's important that we um, – I think we categorize these things and keep track of them because one day I think there's going to be some sociology uh, PhDs going for their, uh, their um, thesis on, on this very topic. Lots of them. This is going to be a very interesting topic in the future for psychologists because in uh, textbooks in 200, 300 years, this is going to be like if if the world is implode in two or three hundred years, this is going to be like the uh, the the main topic. Just two hundred years ago, we were doing this and this. Just two hundred years ago, we had slaves. Think about that. Like I don't know how long ago it was, but I mean, just think about that. Like we literally. And and the funny thing is is that the same sentence in the Bible that justified circumcision that we're fighting against today also justified slavery in the same sentence. <laughs> I mean, so think about it. Anyways, um, any else, anything else you wanted to say, James? Uh, no, well, the Bible also disapproves of it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Multiple times. I, I think, I think that's, I think that's good, but if there's anything that any questions, comments, concerns that, I think should be addressed. I know who I have your contact and I can text you. Yeah. Feel free anytime, mm. man. Uh, I, I always appreciate our conversations and, and any questions anybody has of me, like if I can answer them, I'll try, you know, I'm not the end all be all, but I'll do my best, you know, and I have some resources. So, you know, that's, uh, that's why I do this, you know, because, um, I have access to things that a lot of people, I guess, don't information that a lot of people don't, you know, so who's going to do it if we don't do it. Right. Like it's a, it all goes to that whole thing. You know, like, you know, um, if you want something done right, you got to do it yourself. And, uh, so I was like, I want this done right. And I had to do it myself. So, um, and, but the people that are helping me with this, they see that, you know what I mean? Like, I think you guys realize that. So that's why you keep coming back. But, um, yeah, we're doing fantastic. We're on the route. Uh, someday, this is going to have a lot of influence on saving babies just because uh, once that Maldic is set up and we're sending 23,000 emails at a time, and I know it's going to whittle down. It'll probably whittle down to somewhere around 2,000 but or 20,000 but or maybe even 19 or 18, but those would be high-quality 18,000 leads. That's a lot, guys. And every week, we're going to have a campaign going out to them followed by phone calls. And we're going to have the information on who opened what, like how many emails were read, who's read everything. You know, we're going to know who read everything. Then we can, you know, um, we can look them up on our database and try to find contact information and just make, you know, try to try to call them and contact them, you know. Um, anyways, love you guys. Peace out. Thanks for sticking around for so long and listen to us talk. I think Jay's Jay's. Uh, Thank you, Jay, for uh, staying up so late. I know he got off because he's probably going to get some sleep, but he's on the other side of the world. So we're talking with people in Kenya, uh, fantastic human beings all over the world care about this issue. Uh, we want to see children protected um, and we care enough about it that we'll actually show up to protest. We'll make programs. We'll uh, fight for the rights of children to have their whole body. All right. Love you guys. Peace and hair grease. I'm out. We break up the adhesion between the foreskin and the head of the penis.
pediatrics, the reason we're circumcising is mainly because you feel more comfortable with a circumcised penis, especially since your other two children are already circumcised. Exactly. Right? Basically what we're doing is an elective procedure, primarily because you just feel more comfortable. In the clamp, then we clamp it. behind circumcisions. Hospitals and doctors can make big bucks off the procedure, especially since the foreskin doesn't always go out with the biohazard. Sometimes it's sold for a profit. You know, look at the data. It looks like there are, there are some things that it does reduce the incidence of, but there are things that are incredibly rare anyway. There are religious, ethical, cultural, and medical reasons to circumcise. For Father Kobe Johnson, despite being circumcised himself, he decided not to circumcise his four boys. The concern of, oh, I'm going to look different than my dad, or I'm going to look different than the other guys in the middle school shower, it doesn't really come up that much. To him, medical benefits didn't outweigh the risks.